Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam Alhamdulillah. How are you doing, boys? Alhamdulillah, not too bad. Alhamdulillah, all good, my brother, all good. Dr. Imran, what's happened to your camera? It's doing this at the moment, so inshallah, I'll try and fi fix it as we go along. Uh, hopefully, it'll work it out. Don't know. Inshallah. Otherwise, inshallah. you have the Mandalorian, mashallah. Oh, subhanallah. Uh, so, alhamdulillah, we're episode 17 of The Perfect Storm. Um, and in the perfect storm, uh, you, the non-Muslim, this is a non-Muslim stream, uh, will come on to the stream to give us a view as to why you believe what you believe uh, and why you believe it. And then we will put that belief through the storm and we will basically challenge uh, what you believe. Um, so if you want to get on, uh, do try to get on as soon as you can because we generally get quite a lot of guests near the end. And it's very difficult to get everybody on. Uh, so, as I say, if you want to come on to the perfect storm, you really need to get in there early. Uh, Brother Hamza, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm all good. I'm just wading through mountains of scarves at the moment. All the Turkish stuff arrived, so I've been hanging scarves for the past three days nonstop. Um, what's the quality like in Turkey? I heard that the quality is very good next level it's like anything there's good stuff and bad stuff don't get me wrong but the stuff i chose really good quality the, the, i think the most the thing about turkey the packaging the care they, they package nicely it's, they don't just throw it in a plastic bag they, they do it all really ribbons and stuff really good alhamdulillah i'm very pleased i'm very pleased indeed mashallah Allah, alhamdulillah and how was the uh how was the stay in uh, in turkey mashallah in turkey awesome yeah. awesome it was because uh, I was on a mission. I didn't get to do much sightseeing, but it was really, really uh, good. Uh, masjids everywhere. Alhamdulillah. Um, you see my storming of the Hagia Sophia. Get to the front staff. Did you see that? I didn't see that. No. no. Oh, bro, you gotta check it out, man. The way I stealthily crept to get to the. I got right behind the Imam in the front staff. Yeah. Mashallah. Mashallah. So, uh, but yeah, that was really good. And the people are so nice. Um, I had to try and make them speak English because. My Turkish finishes at Nasselsen and Tashaka Ederin. That's it. I'm done. Oh. <laughs> well, mashallah, the Turkish people are generally very warm, very friendly um, uh, people. Every, everyone that I've met, you know, who, who's from Turkey, uh, generally, really, mashallah, lovely people, very hospitable, mashallah. Yeah, there was one brother asked him. He was, he was even in my lives when, when I did the Hamza's Den because I, I was saying all this guy asked him and he was in the comment section. He's like, hey! It was, it was so good, man. They were so hospitable, the way that everything just linked up beautifully. Alhamdulillah. It was good. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I recommend anybody, seriously, go visit Istanbul. If you haven't visited Istanbul, go visit Istanbul. It is, it is really nice, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so, uh, uh, Dr. Imran and, and, and Hamza, I was, today I was looking at Isaiah, Isaiah 42 uh, from verse 9 onwards. I was actually quite surprised because obviously I know I remember you mentioning it before as well, Hamza, um, how it prophesizes about the coming of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the definition actually that it gives, the explanation that it gives there is actually really, really, I think, very sort of accurate in terms of, uh, you know, talking about the Prophet Muhammad. What, what do you think about that, Hamza? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I've struggled to find who else it could well be talking about. Yeah. And, and this is the key, you know, see what happens sometimes we fall into this kind of idea that we have to validate Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu using the Bible. We have to validate Islam using the Bible, but we don't. But what we can do is speak to the Christians and say, well, hey, who's this? Who, who's this referring to? And you get so many different answers. There's one guy who keeps going to say Cyrus. Um, and I need to look into that particular claim, to be honest. Um, but who is it? Because it's speaking about somebody who's making the Arabs sing with joy and turning back their idolatry, idolat idolaters and um, coming as a mighty warrior. Who, who is this? It can't be Jesus. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and the problem you got, you see, with, and, and this is a standard with Christians, they want every single minutiae of, the, of, the, of what it says to fit. If it doesn't, they throw it away. And the problem they've got is, but they don't do the same. So, for example, they say Isaiah 9, 6 is talking about Jesus. The, you know, the, the virgin give birth or the young woman give birth and he should call wonderful counselor and all this business. Yeah. And there's so many things in that prophecy that doesn't fit him. But they, they say, oh, because it was a virgin. Do you get me? Yeah, yeah. This is Jesus. And like Isaiah 53, is it 53, 7, where they talk about the suffering servant? 
Um, and they, they ignore the part that said he'll see his seed and that he was really ugly and all this kind of stuff. They'll just so the, so it's, it's ironic that a Christian will make you try to pin you to every aspect of a prophecy, yet they themselves don't do the same. It's yeah. another standard typical Christian flex. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, mean, I think, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, I, yeah. what I've done in the past when I've, I've used this particular thing, you know, in um, when I've been debating on Facebook. And what I'll do, I'll quote the part where it says, like, he shall make the, you know, the people of Sela sing with joy. And then I'll play a clip from the message said like this. And I play that little clip. Do you get me? And then when he, he should turn back the idolaters. And then I play the part in the message where he goes to the Kaaba and breaks all the idols. And, it's, it's, and then the part about the warrior that I show the battle scene. And it's really, really effective to say, well, look, this is this is kind of it's kind of like a biography here. Yeah, <laughs> do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I wonder actually why when you have, you know, such strong evidence in terms of pointing to another that's going to come uh, that you would still just basically deny it. Uh, it, it very odd, really, to be honest. Um, Antinatalist, you're in the back chat, but you need to show your face. We need to identify you first before we can get you on. Uh, so even if you're on for just a few seconds, we can identify you. You can then switch your camera off uh, once you come onto the stream. But we can't. We won't get anybody on the stream now uh, unless you activate your camera at least for a, a few seconds, so we can uh, verify who you are. Um, Doctor Imran, about that prophecy in, in Isaiah. Uh, does anything else stand out to you? Well, Alhamdulillah, I just want to, you asked the question, why don't people see it? it's so obvious? Well, you know, to, you know, just, just, just to be a bit charitable, obviously Christians don't believe that there's going to be anyone else after Jesus speaks upon him. I don't know why, because Jesus does speak about, uh, you know, that there are many things I, that I must tell you that uh, you cannot bear them now. He talks about the priority to come after him. Uh, we know, prophets. absolutely, the, the, we, we have all these statements about testing the prophets to come. Um, so we have all, all of these statements, but there is still this the general belief that there won't be any prophets after Jesus, peace be upon him. And it sort of uh, goes against the whole theology. I mean, if Jesus has done all the work, peace be upon him, by dying on the cross for you and resurrecting, then it's all done, right? There's nothing else to be done. Um so that, that's probably why they, they have this sort of the, the, the glasses on that suggest that there isn't anybody else. And so they look at these things and they don't really know how, like, like Brother Hamza said, who else could this apply to? There isn't anyone else that this could apply to. Uh, specifically the mention of Kedar and the, you know, the, the people who are the Arabs, and then specifically the mention of Salah, which is you know, <laughs> Medina, subhanAllah. It's, it's, it's specifically in time and people, so the, the place and the people are mentioned with clarity and, uh, yeah. It's really there for understanding, but it, it depends on how wide open you are to uh, believing that after Jesus there will be somebody else, please be him. And even even Kedar, Kedar is, uh, you know, the, the two Arab civilization, one which was the Nabataean um, in Petra, and then uh, the Kedarites from Mecca, and even the Jews referred to them as Kedarites. Uh, as from Kedar, and this was, uh, I think in Hebrew, I, I, I mean, I wrote this down, it says, Leshon uh, Kedar, Leshon Kedar, which basically means uh, the uh, the tongue of Kedar, which is Arabic, basically, and this was referring to, uh, the, the this was referring to the Meccans, uh, that, uh, and, and the Jews understood it as Kedarites, that these are, these are the people of Kedar, which was the second son of Ismail alayhi salam. So they say, you know, if you look at the, the, the genealogy of uh, of the children of, of, of Ismail alayhi salam, they say the second son is Kedar. And in fact, the early Muslim scholars, um, if you go to, uh, I think, Ibn Qayyim or uh, Dabri, basically they refer to Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam as a descendant of Kedar, as a descendant of the second son of Ismail. So it all actually ties in. <laughs> It, it, it all really ties in to the fact that this is, uh, you know, that this is um, this is pro the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I think, like you said, Hamza, you know, defeating idolatry. And where was the other phrase, Hamza, that would come with 10,000 saints or... Oh, oh uh, from Mount Paran with 10,000 saints with a fiery law in his right hand. Yeah. Um, so look, yes, sir. Because there, because ten thousand saints, uh, we we believe that the Prophet came with ten thousand strong. Yeah, when he 
when he took over Mecca, right? Uh, yeah. With the fiery law, which basically was the law of God, which was this was the law set down by God Almighty, right? I mean, that's quite a famous sort of um because it talks about three regions there. I mean, this is that was in I think Deuteronomy 33 that's in, and it talks about um the Lord coming from Sinai and then from Seir yeah. and then from Mount Paran. And he will come with it. It's sometimes it's translated in a funny way, but it's it's really ten thousand holy ones, uh, and uh, that really does fit well exactly. I mean, Paran obviously referring again to the same region that the prophets of is from, and then um, it, all these places are where prophets have come from. So uh, you have Mount Sinai, you have Seir, and then you have Mount Paran. So it's very it's fascinating. There are there are all these illusion, uh, uh, you know, these I would say quite clear sort of statements about. Um, that we could we could as muslims we could look and see quite clearly up yeah, this is talking about the peace upon him but i suppose it depends upon the how open uh, the christians or the, or the our jewish brothers and sisters are but i would say that it's interesting that there are there were so many jewish tribes and in, in mecca and medina area who you know why were they there specifically because they were expecting these prophecies to come true i would put forward you know yeah because i mean the thing is that you have many tribes in Medina that were well established, uh, you know, they, and they were the main owners of, of of the date palms, and they 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 built forts, and they built a firm hold. And one of the theories is that, well, from their own scriptures, from their own books, they were expecting in this location, because the mountain Senna uh, Senna is mentioned as well, right, in the uh, in 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 the Old Testament. So Sela. Sela, Sela, Mount yes. Sela, and that is a mountain in Medina, isn't it? Yeah. And so they were expecting, for, and, and, and Medina is surrounded by mountains, subhanAllah, right? Uh, so it's yeah. quite extraordinary, really. So I think this is something interesting for Christians, really, to think about. As but there's, to, there's even bigger problem they have. Who is yeah. the Shiloh? Yeah. The Shiloh is, is, is the one, because the Shiloh can't be Jesus. Because the Shiloh can't be from the house of David, and if Jesus is not the Shiloh, then if Jesus if Jesus is the Shiloh, then he's not the Messiah, because uh, the, the the Messiah has to come from the house of David, and the, the prophecy about the Shiloh is that the prophet the prophethood and the royal scepter remains in the house of David until Shiloh comes. Mm. Well, who's Shiloh? Because if it's Jesus, then he's not from the house of David. So the the, the Shiloh is going to be a stranger to the house of David. And then all dominion will be with him. What's so the, the reference to that? And the, the, the king should the pass over to him. Do you remember the reference for that? Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got, the, the I've got my book. I've, got my, I've just opened my book, actually, at the moment. You know, Muhammad in the Bible by that um, Abdullah, uh, Abdullah Daoud. You know, the uh, David Kaldani, the uh, ex-Christian. And... Um, I mean, if you... And I think we've mentioned this before, that if you look at the word... Shiloh, and you look at the word messenger, they're virtually identical in the way they're written. And you know, many have put forward that this is uh, just a just a misspelling or a uh, you know a something that crept in. So let me post in the let me post the Hebrew. Uh, uh, this will be coming up as the after hour. So this is uh, Shiloh. I'll post it. Um, I'll post it's, it's, it. it's Genesis forty nine, chapter ten. Uh, if you want to know the actual reference. And this is and then our post messenger, so that you have both. You can look and you can look at the words yourselves. And this is in the Hebrew. I've just posted it now, and you can. I'll, I'll let the comment come up. And if you look at the Hebrew, they're virtually identical. Um, there's just a. There's just one little yeah. dash after. Yeah. The, yeah. So it's just the way that the placement of the dash, and then the. the I mean, I don't know the I don't know the Hebrew to read even the letters, but you see the end letter that one one area is closed and the other one isn't. Mm. And so there there was a brother I went I attended a talk that he did. The brother speaks Greek and Hebrew. He did a talk a long time ago, the Arab brother Mashallah, about twenty years ago. And he he said, you know, when he saw this, he saw it was a, as a mistaken something that was mistakenly written, and it was clearly saying when the messenger comes for him when he was reading that. And we can see this the similarity there, Subhanallah. Very, very. Yeah. So basically, basically, what it's saying is the scepter shall not depart from Judah, which means um, the um, the kingship, and the lawgiver from between his feet, which is obviously the prophethood, 
until the coming of Shiloh, and to him belongeth the obedience of peoples. So, and then, so the way this guy um, explains it is, the royal and prophetic character shall not pass away from Judah until to, to him whom it belongs comes, for him is the homage of the people. That's what it, it should be reading. And the question needs to be asked, who is this? Who is yeah. this you're saying? It can't be yeah. Jesus. So we know the Christians can't say Jesus. So who is it? Who is it who come as a prophet outside the outside of the house of Israel, outside the king of David? Yeah. I can only think of one. Exactly. Unless someone can think of another prophet outside the house of Israel. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting a, quite a few people coming onto the back chat, uh, backstage. Um, but guys, you need to have your camera on. We need to identify you uh, before we can let you on. Um, because, you know, we don't want people coming on and just, you know, posting silly stuff. So uh, you've got to identify yourself, switch your camera on, let us identify you. Then if you wish to have your camera off when you come on the screen, then you can do that. Uh, but we, we must identify you first. So if, if you want to come on uh, and talk about anything that you believe and put it through the, uh, through the storm, uh, you're more than welcome to. But remember, please, you need to have that camera on. Uh, did you want to add, add, add anything to that, uh, Imran? Uh, can I just top up what, what Imran said, actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did yeah. mention this. It says, um, it is most likely that some old transcriber or copyist, current Kalamo, and with a slip of pen has detached the left side of the final letter, Het, and then it has been transformed into He. For the two letters are exceedingly alike, being only very slightly different on the left side. Mm. If such an error has been transmitted in the Hebrew manuscript, either intentionally or not, then the word is de derived from shalah, to send, delegate, the past participle of which would be shalu, that is, one who is sent an apostle messenger. So, you know, these are, these are the uh, thoughts on it. Yeah. Who's her rule? We have, a, we have a winner. You're muted, Buzz. Welcome to You're the muted. stream, Harold. Can you hear us, Harold? Oh, is there something you said? You oh, let's put the light on. <laughs> Let there be light. Let there be light. There light. And there was. Uh, and it was good. H Harold, are you actually Muslim? I suspect that you are. Harold, can you hear us? Harold, can you hear us? Yes. You can hear us? Are, are, are you Muslim, brother? You are. Uh, rather, this is actually for uh, non-Muslims uh, to come on and give their beliefs, and then we we, we challenge their beliefs. I, th I don't think it would be good for us to be challenging your beliefs because uh, the, ch the chances are we believe what you believe. <laughs> so, if if you don't mind, inshallah, uh, you know, try to get onto a stream where we we do have that Dawa clinic, and we do have you know other streams where you can get a chance to come on, inshallah. Is that all right? All right, Salaam Alaikum, Salaam Alaikum. So, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, just to remind you, this is a stream for non-Muslims. Uh, you come and give your view as to what you believe, why you believe it, and we will uh, respectfully challenge that view uh, and, and discuss why we believe, uh, you know, uh, what we believe about that particular uh, way of life or belief. So, yeah, if you're atheist, you're welcome to come on as well and tell us why you believe in atheism. Uh, why you reject God, um, we would be quite happy to engage with you on that discussion as well. Um, but as I say, if you if you want to come on, we've had a few people in the back chat, uh, but they haven't had their camera on. If you don't have your camera on, we can't really get you on the stream. So you need to at least identify yourself. Uh, sorry, Dr. Imran, did you want to add anything at all to that? No, alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm fine, inshallah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So I, so I, so I think the, the Shiloh one is very interesting, right? Because... Uh, you know, if you if you if you if, if it, this is is pointing towards a messenger outside of the house of David, so therefore it can't be a descendant from the, the family of Jews from the Hebrews. It has to be from somebody outside. Uh, it, it's quite extraordinary, actually. You know, how how would you be able to then simply deny it? I think that often what happens is that people have already made up their mind, really, haven't they? And it doesn't really matter about the strength of the argument or the evidence that's provided. Uh, they're still not going to accept it. So we've got two more guys on the uh, on the um, on the back chat on the backstage. But guys, you just need to put your camera on for a, a second or two. 
so we can identify you and then um, we can get you on. But, it, but in terms of accepting, really it's about um, explaining. If you don't, you don't, fine, don't accept it. Explain who, who these people are, who these individuals are. Yeah, who, is yeah. the, who is the who is the Shiloh then? Who is got, who's yeah. going to be a stranger to Judah, the house of Judah? Who you know? Who is who are these people? Uh, who is the person that was coming from Paran with a fiery law with ten thousand saints? Who is the Robert one who? Jealous. Subhanallah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, so guys, oh, you, we've got two more guys in the uh, backstage. Uh, guys, you need to put your camera on for at least a split second so we can identify you. Uh, We've got three guys now in the back chat, or oh, just one's just dropped off again. Uh, can you just put your cameras on for like a split second so we can identify who you are? Otherwise, we won't be able to get you on. Come on, Tony Soprano, put your camera on. Can you hear, can you hear us, guys? We've got uh, Joe as well. Joe, your device is not connected. We need to connect your device. Uh, you need to switch your camera on for a split. Are you struggling to actually stay on at all? Uh, yeah, okay. So we'll uh, we'll wait for uh, Rob. We've got you as well. So Rob, we need you to put your camera on for a split second so we can identify that it is you, and then we can get you on. I think we'll do. I'll go live on TikTok as well. And, uh, okay, hey, yeah, that's yeah, that, Rob's identified himself. Hello, Rob. How are you? Hi, Abbas. How are you? How are you doing? You okay? Yeah. Uh, well, not really. Um... I just want to make a formal protest okay. regarding Ijaz's behaviour on oh, the sure. arena. Okay, no, no. Rob, uh, no, no. Rob, that, Rob. You're wrong, wrong channel, mate. Wrong channel. Rob, I'm gonna, Rob, I'm going to mute you because really uh, the stream is not about you coming and telling us about uh, one of the members and what he might have said. If he's here and you challenge him on something and he's here to defend himself, then he can do that. But uh, this is not the way, really, Rob, to, to do that. I will get you back on if you've got another point to make, uh, but uh, not to, um, you know, not to just uh, make these type of points. So I'll, I'll get you on again, Rob. But if you've got a, if you've got a, point, a point to make just, about just, what we've just, just discussed. If you've got a problem with what happened at Hamza's Den, uh, send a message to the complaints department. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Rob, <laughs> what, 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 what do you believe, Rob, and why do you believe it, Rob? Um, I'm sorry until I receive an apology from Ijaz. I want you coming in again. Simple All right, as then, that. Rob. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, Rob, oh my God, he's offended. Oh taken, yeah. We've taken the time to come on, and then you've uh, you've done that. Uh, okay, BMW fan one ten. Uh, bro brother, are you are you Muslim? Uh, yes, yes, I am. I just wanted to say something very, very important about Isaiah forty two. Uh, in case you discuss it with any Christians, that uh, may I have your permission to do that? Uh, all right, brother, very, very quickly. But generally, uh, this is a non-Muslim stream, but go ahead. I, yeah, I apologize. I just wanted to let you guys know. Maybe you guys know this already, but anybody who's looking into the prophecy of uh, Isaiah 42 and trying to correlate it to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I encourage you to look at the Septuagint version. I don't know if you guys have looked at the Septuagint version, but it's, it's hilarious. So... Um, there's a very well-known uh, phenomenon where the word etmachba in, in, uh, in Hebrew, which means I uphold, looks exactly like the word Ahmed in, in Hebrew, which is like um, the Prophet uh, name in the Quran. And uh, the Septuagint, it, it removes the entirety of, the, um, of my servant whom I uphold, and it injects Israel onto there. It says, my servant Jacob, uh, you are Israel who, whom, uh, whom I am pleased with. So the Septuagint actually removed whom I uphold entirely and kind of interpolated the, the exegesis into the actual text. And I've looked in all of the servant songs in, in Isaiah, and this is the only, the only instance where it's done. So it looks very, very deliberate that they removed an Arabized name and put in Israel in the, in the actual text of, of the prophecy. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it certainly doesn't surprise me. I think when... If, you, if they were to have left in all of the references, because we, we, we were told that, and we are told that uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was mentioned in the previous scriptures. So they had that information. They knew that there was this person to come, this uh, Messiah to come, this, uh, this uh, um, uh, you know, this prophet to come, basically. Um, and so I suppose, you know, you have to remove things. I, I was actually speaking to, 
brother Ijaz today, and he was saying actually what would be a very good idea is that, you know, if you study uh, Isaiah in, in the deep sea scrolls, actually there's a lot more information in there that you'll find really interesting. So I think that's my next port of call actually to, to study the, uh, the deep sea scrolls. And there's large chunks of Isaiah apparently in there, he was saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Isaiah is like the most um, preserved, uh, most preserved scroll. Book. Yeah. yeah. Everything yeah. else is fragmentary. But yeah, yeah. to all the Christians, uh, this will this will be helpful for you guys. Even in like, um, I guess, uh, trying to, de to determine whether the Old Testament is preserved, look at the Masoretic text for Isaiah 42 and look at the Septuagint and, and try to wrap your head around why is it that they're completely different. Yeah. Jazakallah khair for that, brother. Brother, where are you yeah. from then? Where are you uh, tuning in from? I'm from Michigan. I'm, I'm ethnically from Yemen, but I'm from Michigan. Okay, in the United mashallah, States. Mashallah. The Prophet Sallallahu said great things about Yemen, Yemenis. No, no, we have a, we have a, a lot to live up to. <laughs> uh, mashallah, he said wonderful, wonderful things. And I remember, uh, I think it was uh, Sheikh Yasser Qadi who said that he mentioned this. And then next week, all the brother from Yemen came for the lecture because they, they said, See? can you tell us about what you said last week? <laughs> that, that was a grift by Yasser Qadi. That was a grift. He was just... He yeah. was just trying to get an audience. Yeah. Was yeah. It, the prophet, because, I, said, I think what, what was the actual thing the Prophet said? He said, uh, al -hikma, uh, al -hikma tu, al al -imanu yamani wal -hikmatu yamani. Yes, mashallah. Yeah. So just translate that for the brothers and sisters. Uh yeah, so he said he said faith, uh a literal translation wouldn't be right. So but he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that sallam. faith faith is a is is intrinsic in the Yemeni people. And uh, and also wisdom is the same. Mashallah, mashallah. But, after, but I, after, I heard that, uh, after I heard that, I wanted to do a DNA test. And I, I wanted to have some <laughs> DNA from Yemen. <laughs> um, <laughs> Inshallah. Okay. All right, brother. Jazakallah. Okay, okay but I won't take up so much of your time. So mashallah, that's some profound, uh, profoundly important things there as well. And I think the name Ahmed, we do find very, very similar. Uh, I think, uh, Imran, you mentioned as well, that the word Ahmed, which is, of course, uh, the name of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was Ahmed, right, originally, right? Um, and mashallah, the Prophet had many titles, but um, these things were removed and they were clearly removed deliberately to conceal, uh, the, conceal the truth, conceal the evidence. One of the things that Mashallah stands out uh, when I was uh, uh, listening to the seerah is that um, um, uh, the Prophet's wife Zainab, when she was a young girl and her father and her uncle, she says she remembers because later, obviously, she, she became Muslim and she, um, she, she, she married the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But she said that, um, that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Medina, her uncle and her father they went to check to find out whether this was the prophet that they were waiting for. Uh, and obviously they were waiting for a prophet from amongst themselves, right? Because they weren't expecting uh, that this lineage of prophet who would suddenly be transferred to, to, to the Arabs. Uh, and uh, she says that I was playing and I, and I went and I approached them, but they completely ignored me. And um, then she sat there and she heard them speaking. And so one of them says to the other person, you know, either the uncle said to the, her father or the father said to her uncle, I can't remember exactly now, is he the one? And the other person replied, yes, he is. You know, so, so, in, in, so they knew. And as, as we're told uh, that they knew him better than they knew their own children, their own sons, basically. They recognized the prophet. They knew that this was the prophet uh, of Allah. And uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they just rejected him because he was from a people that they looked down upon, that they thought these were the Arabs. How can these people become, in effect, you know, uh, from amongst them? How can their, 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 one of theirs become our superior in authority over us? Subhanallah. So it just shows the arrogance. And, uh, and I think to our Christian brothers and sisters, this is a lesson for you as well. Because you might be looking at Islam as an Arab religion, as an Asian religion, as a foreign religion. Uh, but Jesus came from the same area. And he looked very much, you know, uh, he wasn't white. He wasn't European. You know, he was from that area. And so uh, Moses, peace be upon him, Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they're all from that same area. 
So just as you don't see Christianity as a foreign uh, ethnic, you know, Arab or Middle Eastern uh, religion, uh, there's no reason to look at the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the same light. Um, uh, you know, um, there's no reason why you shouldn't do that uh, and, and, and accept uh, the truth when the truth reaches you. Um, Dr. Imran, do you want to add anything to that, inshallah? Alhamdulillah, I agree with you. It's about it's about the sincerity and, and the searching. Um, the because there is an idea we can sometimes become lax in our you know self analysis. Are, are we are we believers for the right reason? Are we just happen to be born into a Muslim family or a Christian family or or not? And do, have we actually analysed our own basis for belief and why we believe what we believe? And I think we should all go through that exercise for ourselves at some stage. And most people do. And I think when you do that, then these things are something you should reflect upon and you should, your, your mind should be open to uh, searching for the truth, inshallah. Yeah. So we've got the link out in the description, guys. We are getting people who are uh, coming onto the backstage again, but they're not uh, engaging their camera. They're not showing their camera and we're not going to be able to get you on uh, unless we can at least verify who you are. Um uh, uh, should we open it up to, uh, to, to to Muslims as well? Because, uh, as I say, the non-Muslims are not opening their cameras up, so we can't get them on. Should we invite some? I'm just going to go bait someone on Clubhouse. But, yeah, carry on. Okay. <laughs> so apparently the storm is off the Richter scale um, and it's causing earthquakes enough so that people are avoiding the area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, the trees are swaying and the buildings are shaking and the uh, people are running I think what it is you see they realise that they can't come on here and defend what they've got to believe and this is why most of the time when you speak to Christians and such they're always attacking Islam because they can't defend their own beliefs so even atheists when they come on oh you believe in the sky daddy this that the other as soon as you switch it on them and start poking what they believe they realise that this is the wrong stream because you don't ask us we ask you and if you yeah. can't defend what you've got I'm not surprised you're not coming on. Subhanallah. Yeah, subhanAllah. Uh, and one of the things that I've also mentioned before to our, our Christian brothers and sisters, uh, the reason why we do talk so much about and discuss so much about Christianity is because between us, uh, Christian, Christians and, and Muslims, we make up, um, you know, practically, uh, you know, over, over 50% of the entire population of this planet uh, and the, the two most significant religions, I think, that are, I, not, I suppose, not competing necessarily, but uh, uh, both uh, proselytize about their religion uh, and it is somewhat global, is, uh, is Christianity and is Islam. And, you know, Christianity often and Christians often tell us that we're wrong. And so we would like to enter into these into these debates. I think they're very, very uh, healthy uh, debates and discussions to have. Um, and I think, as I say, there's, there is so much evidence that points towards Islam, that points towards the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, if you want to come onto the stream, guys, you uh, have to show your... We've got one other person in the back uh, chat now, but you need to put your camera on, otherwise we... Uh, we won't be able to let you so on. Just, just to clarify that, because someone's mentioned maybe people don't want to show their face. So all this means is that you don't have to show your face on the stream, but in the back, when you're in the back uh, st uh, stages of the, the back room, then all you would have to do is for a moment show the moderator the your your face, and so that we know that you are not some person who's uh, apt to do something horrible. And then then you could turn your camera off, and once you're verified, you can come on the stream without your camera and, and carry on as normal. So it's not a difficult process, and it's not one about revealing your identity to the world. It's just for a moment no. for us to clarify. So uh, we've got Vato uh, Loco. Vato Loco, can we just see your face? If you can just move the camera down a little bit. Excellent. Uh, do you want to leave your camera on, or would you like to switch your camera off? You can leave it on if you want to. Okay, lovely. Uh, Vato Loco, welcome, uh, welcome to the stream. Oh, just a second. I can't hear you. Yeah, we can hear you can hear you i can't hear you when i switch off my cam yeah yeah we can we can definitely hear you though okay okay fine fine thank you thank you for having me on your show sure so i can't hear you now we i don't can know hear why you. we can we can hear you okay uh, okay i'm at the perfect storm i'm a muslim 
but um, I have. I can't hear you when you're talking. I can't hear you. No, bro brother, we we can actually hear you. Uh, <laughs> no, but I can't hear you. I can see we're you. We're not talking. talking. We're not talking. We're, we're not talking we're at listening. the moment. We're just listening to you. Uh, okay, I okay, maybe I should uh, see you on. Maybe on, switch on off your YouTube your lips, okay. and, and just switch off your YouTube and just leave your stream. Yeah, yeah uh, I switch off my TV with YouTube. So I just... Otherwise, you're going to hear echoes, you see. So uh, okay. yeah, go ahead and ask uh, or say whatever you'd like to say, brother. Uh, one thing about the Quran, uh, I saw you guys, Hamza, um, brother Manzur, and you, brother Abbas, talking about um, the signs, why the Quran is um, the truth and why it is a miracle. And one thing you said was that uh, there's a test, but only for Arab-speaking people. In my opinion, that's... Um, you can apply it to any language because uh, in any language, there's uh, two uh, types of, uh, how can I say, sorry, my English is not my first uh, language. In every language, as far as I know, there is two types of, um, how can I say, uh, there's the lyric and there's a prosa. You know, what we are talking now is prosa. You are, um, if you want to describe something, you want to tell us a story, what, how your day was, or how a machine works, or whatever. Yeah. This is yeah. prosa. And the other thing is lyric. You know, it's it's poem. You know, rhymes and everything, everything yeah. like this. Yeah. You can only have one of these two. We as human, we can only uh, use the the prosa text if we want to give uh, information to another person. Or we can use the uh, lyric, we say lyric, uh, yeah, the uh, poem. If you want to um, uh, 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 um, make our feelings, uh, express our feelings. You, you understand me? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, I was, we, we I was using the word style. Yes, yes. And these two you can't mix, you know? If you mix these two styles, you, uh, you, you, you just get, get some gibberish. You know, yeah, there's, there's actually this, three. There's actually three. Yes. It's this style, meaning, yes. and grammar. Yes. Yeah. So you and have the style, the, you have the meaning, and you have the grammar. When yes, you use and style this, and meaning, you can lose grammar. When you use meaning yes. and style, when you use grammar and meaning, you can lose style. It, exactly. The, the, the idea you can't combine all three. Yes, exactly. And this is in this in my uh, humble opinion, you can do it. In every language, and if you will work, uh, try it in English. I mean, just uh, any Christian atheist or whatever should tell you in, in in rhymes and poems what they did today or what's their work, what's what's their profession. You know, in rhyme in rhymes, you know, they they won't be able to do that. You you get me? And this yeah, you can I, do in I, my I think, opinion. I think, brother, what it is, brother uh, Vato, what, what what it is is that. Obviously, the, one of the tests of language, i.e., if you are truthful, then, then produce a Quran like yes. it, Allah says. Yes. And then Allah says, you know, uh, he lessens it and he says 10 chapters like it. Yes. A and then it's one chapter like it. Now, obviously, that challenge is for the, uh, the, the Arab speaker. Because as an English native English speaker or, uh, or person who understands uh, and speaks uh, Hindi or Urdu uh, and Gujarati or whatever, I wouldn't be able to enter myself into that challenge, you see. So some of the challenges are for the native yeah, Arab yes, speaker. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and I understand that some of the language miracles you just can't and um, you just uh, can understand if you yeah, really yeah. speak Arabic. Yeah. But, no, no, no. But here's the question you've got to answer. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't the Arab poets produce something like it? Uh, excuse me again? Why did the Arab poets not produce something like it? Yeah, because they are just uh, human, human beings and they can't mix these two kinds of uh, style of um, yeah, speak or reading or whatever, this lyric style and the prosa style, you know? So I think they the brother agrees that it is a miracle, the mix uh... of it. You, um, well, I, I don't think he is. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to yeah. work out whether he's with us or against us. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm no, just. He's with us. He's with us. Right. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm just, um, this is my opinion. I want to he hear from you uh, what you think. It's not, I don't, how can I say? It's, it's my opinion. Yeah. You know, and this I, is I, what so, I, so I my that, research you know, and what I have understood. Yeah, but what is the opinion you're holding? What is the opinion? Yeah. What do you mean? What is my opinion? Well, well what is the opinion you're saying then? What is, what is the claim you're making? I'm trying to understand it. That's why I'm 50 50 with you, with those against us. Oh, What's okay, the okay, sorry, sorry. My claim is that the even the English speaking, Ger I'm from, Ger I'm live in Germany. I'm originally from Afghanistan, but I live in Germany. It doesn't matter which language you are speaking. One of the mir uh, linguistic miracle you can prove by yourself. You know, in the form of that, you tell me what's your profession in kind in rhyme form. You know, if you say, I'm, right. I don't know, I'm a mechanic, my name is Joe, I don't know, Bionic. You know what I mean? If you do, the Quran does that. You understand me? The Quran speaks in rhymes. Uh, right, but you okay, no. so, so, what you're basically you basically saying? But you understand the, the, the story behind it. If he talks about Musa, yeah. Salam. Everybody, it speaks in rhymes, but you understand the story behind it. Let me just it. clarify you know what you're I mean? saying then, because I think I've worked it out now. Yeah. It took me a while, honestly. So <laughs> Sorry, what you're basically yeah. saying is, what you're basically yeah. saying is, mm -hmm. where the Quran makes the claim that you cannot, it cannot be, uh, you cannot do it, basically, the challenge is for the Arabs. What you're mm -hmm. basically saying is, not only can mm -hmm. the Arabs not do it, mm -hmm. nobody can create a book with style, meaning, and grammar, basically. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, yes, so, yes. So, yes. so you can't even do it in your language, and how has it been done in this book? So I get it now. You are with us. I understand. Carry on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it doesn't matter what language you are speaking. If, 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 if somebody tells me, no, the Quran's not right, I give him pen and paper, and I tell him, okay, if it's not right, the Quran, then prove me wrong. Tell me what you did today in rhyme forms, or tell me what's your profession in rhyme forms, or how to make a coffee. You know, in rhyme forms, they can't do it. Yeah. You, are, yeah. you get I, me? Not only that, am but I, it has to be... Am I, that's wrong, or what's your opinion? In my... yeah. and, and not only that, but it has to be spontaneous, and it has to be sometimes... Yes, this is... Uh, it has course, to be sometimes, uh, you know, due to circumstances arising there and then, okay? Of course, I know, I know. And, People tend to... And, and, then, and then not only that, but it has to be done not in order. So you have to have maybe yes, 10, 10 verses that are come at the end. And then five years later, maybe there's three verses that come before that. Okay. Yeah, you're and, right. that, yeah, yeah. and that has to all come from memory. And it hasn't, and there has to be no editorial process. Yes, that's additional. But this right? is the, the first step. They can't yeah, take the yeah, first step. Yeah. I don't think you're talking yeah. about, you're just talking yeah. about yeah. second, no, no, I third, agree, I agree. Well, I mean, like they so just many levels, take the so many levels, step. subhanAllah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, if they can't, uh, if you have a ladder, then the first uh, step is broken. What do you have? You can't climb the whole ladder. You, you know, yeah. the first ladder, uh, the first step must be solid. And if they can't even do that, they don't have to discuss with me about the fourth yeah. and fifth and sixth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think one of the biggest testimonies against, uh, sorry, for this miracle of the Quran is um, the Arab poets when they were asked, uh, "What is this? Where are these words coming from?" and they said, "It's sorcery." So yeah, the question yeah. we need to be asked: Why would Arab poets hear Arabic and think it's something supernatural? I mean, that in yeah. itself tells you there's something about this language that's completely different and we muslims know subhanallah when you read hadith and you read the quran you know when it's quran and you know when it's hadith or when you know when it's standard arabic yes. you know yes. you know when the quran's being recited and you know if a hadith or you know like for example you hear the khutbah on, on juma and you know when mm -hmm. it's quran and you know when it's hadith yes. just because yes. i know i don't speak arabic yeah but i, I yeah, know yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. the difference yeah yeah subhanallah yeah. Okay. Okay. This uh, that's what this what I. So you sang Gaya or Chutorasti? Chutorasti? You speak? Chutorasti? Who was them? So I just like to flex my Afghani. Brother Imran, do you want to add anything to Brother Vaito said? No, Alhamdulillah, it's interesting perspective. Um, I think for for us as Muslims, it wouldn't really change the the challenge. Um. And really the challenge is about uh, the way that the Quran is structured. So the Arabs had different ways of structuring their their language. So they had uh, the, the, the speech and then they had prose, which is prose. Then they had these different types of poetry. 
uh, which they had, which according to rhyme and meter, they were labeled. They called them Bihar. And there were 16 of them. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 of course. What, the, what, they, yes, what, they found, what they found was that when you the try seven, to categorize yeah. the Quran into any of these types of mm -hmm. writing or, or speaking, they were unable to do that. So Quran, the Quran structurally doesn't fit into any of these. Yes, and yes, uh, and then, this, mean, is the, this is one of the reasons why it was clearly, evident, self evidently, self evidently for the Arabs when they were listening, something that they couldn't produce. And uh, what was fascinating is that. Um, there's two ways of looking at this, produce something like this. So one is talking about, you know, the text itself. The other thing is you have to keep bear in mind the author. The author is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's saying produce another, something like this. And so what, how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produce this? He gave an unlettered man a text that was unparalleled in the, in the whole world, uh, in, in the, definitely in the Arabic, but in the whole world. So if you want to do something like this, then you also go get an unlettered man and give him something which... Um, he can produce uh, something as miraculous as what we have in terms of the Quran. So it's interesting. But Jazakallah, brother, we really appreciate your insights. So may Allah reward you, inshallah. Yeah, Jazakallah khair. And keep doing the good work. Bye. So we've had a few Muslims uh, and non Muslims on the back chat, but. Uh, uh, you, you need to put your camera on if you want to come on for, a, for a, at least a second. Uh, so we can actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, identify you. Once you identify you, then we can get you on. Okay, so we've got uh, Ali, uh, Ali, Ali on next, inshallah. Salam, uh, brother Ali. Assalamu alaikum. You guys can hear me, right? We can hear you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I can speak freely like that because it's it's uh, it's kind of difficult question I have actually. I mean, uh, you don't need to about, keep the camera on, mate. I don't have to. No, okay. we just so we see you in the back chat. That was all. Sure, that's that's fine. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I have one question. Why do we have to believe in God? Why is it so important to believe in God? I mean, you don't have to. Well, no, but, but I mean, the question is, you you really have to believe in something. Yeah, brother Ali, are you actually Muslim or what do you believe? If uh, because it's a rather uh, odd question. I came, I came from, uh, from. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm Muslim. No, no, but uh, I, I came from Islamic uh, culture. So you're not Muslim now. I don't know. Okay. You don't I mean, know if you're Muslim. I mean, uh, what I would do. I mean, uh, my culture is Islamic. I'm Arabic. Uh, what I'm gonna call my name? I mean, my kid. When I have a kid, what I'm gonna call him? What name I would give him? But this, giving this, the name to your child, my brother, doesn't make you a Muslim. Mm, so you can. Yeah. So there were there were but Christians I, who were I can, before I Islam. Can, I can abandon. The name were like Abdullah, uh, but they were Christians. So the naming of your children and the Arab culture is pre-Islamic as well as post-Islamic. So that it's not the culture that we're talking or by referring to. So really, we're referring to Islam as in the five pillars of Islam. Um, <laughs> But my question is, if if I, if I leave Islam, I can be, uh, I can be, uh, Islamically or culturally Islamic. You know what I so mean? The point, the point you can be culturally Arab. I mean, there's, Arab no, there's no alternative. Uh, you can be culturally Islam. Arab. You yeah, culturally yeah. be Arab, but you wouldn't be. Islam is not a culture, my brother. Okay. Uh, brother Ali, you you, sure. you asked the initial question. Yeah. Why Why should you believe in God? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. If God exists, should you believe in Him? Uh, I think I should, but uh, you know, the world is so evil. So no, I mean, but I'm, I, I, would, I, I asked, I, I asked I you. Really... A, I, I asked you a question whether whether the world is evil or not evil does not necessitate whether God exists or doesn't exist, right? No, I mean, if if, he, if he's God and he's just, he can create a, a world uh, that's evil. Yeah, I but think. even if even if even if God decided to create a world that was evil, it doesn't mean that God doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, but what I'd say, I mean, if because, you're, because uh, your initial your initial question was, what? Why should I believe that God exists? Yes. No. Why should I believe in God? Why well, should I? Why should I? What, I beg to him. Ask why should him I believe? Mercy, why should I believe? Ask in him God? mercy and and yeah. all. Everything in our world okay. is, is horrible and bad and can't. So, no, but the point the point here is this. Sure. Whether the world is horrible or not horrible, or whether there is a lot of problems or there are no problems, 
that doesn't change the reality of whether God exists. So God exists despite what you might feel. No, what I, what I say, okay, even if there's a cause for this universe, we don't have to believe that it's God. I no, mean, that, it's, it's again, God. again, again, what, we, what we're trying to do first is we're trying to define terms here. Sure, go ahead. And the point here is, why should you believe in anything? I, I think it would be worth taking the, I mean, um, taking the actual, because um, this is the perfect storm, uh, Brother Ali. Um, so what you what you have to do in this uh, setting is to give us your reasons for your worldview. I mean, can, can, so your yeah. worldview at the moment sounds to me like you have to clarify this. Either you don't believe that God exists, or you're not sure that God exists. So which of those two positions do you think establishes uh, your position? Uh, I don't believe that the God of Abraham is the creator of the world. Why not? Uh, I mean, uh, he he claims that he's omnipotent and omniscient, and I think if if I if you are omnipotent and omniscient, and you have a thousand of years to come up with something, you would come up with something better than ISIS, Al Qaeda, Taliban, <laughs> or or whatever, or maybe KKK if you're Christian. I think Ali, I think you're Ali, omnipotent Ali, and omniscient. Ali. You know, you can make something better than those. Ali, uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Relax. Does Islam yeah. teach killing innocent people? No, it doesn't. Right. But so it makes, it makes a Muslim so, 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 so we know we culpable. know that Allah has come up with a better way than when, killing when, innocent when people. Some, yeah. I, right. yeah, it's clear, it's clear, it's clear. I'm not but right. Brother right. Ali, uh, sorry, one second, guys. Uh, brother Ali, sure. you have plenty of time, my brother, to talk. Don't worry. Sure, Let brother. Hamza finish the point he's making, and then you sure, can sure. carry on. So it's best to have a conversation, inshallah. So I'm sorry. carry on. My apology. Yeah. No, I'm just saying you you made a point that but the as if Islam came up with uh, killing innocent people and terrorism when it when it kind of didn't. I, so I you, know. so you I know mean, that. So why would you why would you conflate if, the two? I don't if, get if it. We, if we talk about the Old Testament, for example, it's a horrible book. The character of Abraham himself, he's horrible. He he was racist. I think I, I read the Old Testament. It's not a good book. I mean, have you read the Hindu scriptures as well? No, I haven't read it because Why not? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, they believe in stuff that I don't think uh, they they actually they are clearly superstition to me. Right. So let's forget religion. Sure. Go ahead. Let's start with a creator. Sure. Go ahead. You believe a creator exists? I believe the world came by a cause. I, I think it's 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 possible. And it's just possible the universe is internal, I think. I'm sorry? Uh, it's possible. It's a possibility. There's a possibility that the, the, the world, the universe, came uh, by a cause. And there's other possibility that the universe is eternal. It's... Uh, so what do you believe? <sighs> I think it's possible that there, there was a cause. Because from what we got, I mean, from what we understand from the universe, that everything has a cause. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. Yeah. But, I mean, it could be eternal. Could be. But it's very rare, I think. What What is it that makes you think it could be eternal? I mean, uh, I mean, the future of science can prove that the universe is eternal. Uh, I, I would accept it. But, I mean... Sorry, say that again, sorry. What has what convinced you? Science of the future? Yeah, in the future. If they can prove the universe is eternal. And if they can't? If they can't, we, I mean, the only thing we can actually believe in, we have evidence for is science. And I think we should we should uh, believe in science. We should know that we are organic uh, species. So our limitation, I mean, our limitation, has, is, our capability has limitation. Okay. So does science have all the answers? Is that what you're saying? No, they don't have it because, we, we, as we said, we were limited. We only know a little bit about evolution. And right. So remind me again why you believe the universe is eternal. Or could be I, I, did, I, did, I didn't say I believed. I said there's a possibility. It, it could be. No, why do you believe it could be? Based upon what? Because we don't know, I think. We don't know yet. But it's I a mean, kind of science of the gaps, yeah? Yeah. Science of the gaps? Yeah. Yeah. We okay. don't know, so science will have the answer in the future. Is that kind of what you're saying? 
Yeah, it's, it's like you should believe in something you could for which you uh, you can provide evidence for, and I think science uh, could, could be that. Right, you know, science couldn't detect God if God existed, yeah. Okay, I don't think it can. Because science believes in natural explanations and dismisses anything supernatural or metaphysical. So no. even if the cause of the universe is something metaphysical or supernatural, science won't detect it. I mean, it's 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 a question. I think no one can answer. But but, but I, I want to ask: Why do we have to have God and believe in God? It, it just ke it makes people, you know, uh, away from each other. You know, uh, everyone has his own God, and you know what I mean. It's. I think if we don't believe in God, we would be in a more peaceful world. I think. Okay, so let's let's imagine a world where you don't believe in God. That's you right now. What's so fantastic about your world? You seem confused. Yeah, I think so. You don't seem a happy kind of guy. You seem kind of confused and... No, because because life is, is tough. Life is difficult. Life is tough. So so how are you getting through life? What's, what's your guide, man? What's your moral compass? What are you using to help you in your decision-making process? You know, commandment and justice for, and principles like justice and love, universal love and, and, you know, solidarity. Things like that. If you commit yourself in those principles, I think you can... You can you can, you know, progress. I think. No, but you're not progressing. You, 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 you're making mistakes and you're miserable. I'm not miserable. You are. Why would you say that? I'm not miserable. I don't wanna. I'm just ask questions. Yeah, that's what I'm saying to you. You know, I, alhamdulillah, I was like you, the opposite way around. You're assuming. So, you're assuming so, I'm miserable and. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. If I was an atheist like you, now I'd be out clubbing. Yeah, I won't. I won't be on a stream here. Anyway, so basically. Um, I used to be like you the other way around, yeah? So I, I, I've come from your position of not believing in anything. The universe could be, have a beginning, could be eternal. And then when I've, when I've sought the intellectual answers, I've concluded that Islam is the truth of the reality of this world. And I've adopted Islam as my way of life. Now I don't have that headache of unanswered questions. Do you get me? Everything, mashallah, is, is, is sorted, whether it's metaphysical or physical, whether it's my daily life, or whether it's my afterlife. I don't worry about these things now. Where you are going to be in perpetual worry. Have you got it right? Is there anything happening when you die? All this kind of stuff. And every every day in your life, you could be making a move because your, your whims and desires are pulling you towards that thing. And it's no good for you. Now, when your creator knows something's no good for you, and, and even though your whims and desires want that thing, and your creator pulls you away from it, you're going to have nothing to pull you away from it. Do you get me? Actually, uh, I don't understand you fully. I'm sorry. I'll say it again to you. Yeah, sure. When you have a decision to make in your life, yeah, mm -hmm. or an opportunity presents itself, what is going to what is going to be the source of your decision making? Uh, now, a lot of us human beings, it's our desires that drive us forward to do things that we want to do things that gratify us and make us happy that we enjoy. Now, sometimes those things are no good for us. So there needs to come a point. Where someone tells us this is no good for you. Just as I have children. My children want to do stuff, eat ice cream or whatever. And I know it's not good for them. They're not going to ice cream for their breakfast. Do you know what I mean? So I'm there to guide them. So yeah. who is there to guide you, Ali? I think, you know, when you experience, uh, when you make experiences, you understand. You When you fail, you know, you, you start to, you know, understand the world better, I think, by, by living. But, yeah, but general. for some people it's too late, mate. Sometimes the the uh, have doing the experience. So, for example, someone experiences a bit of crack, a bit of heroin. Yeah, mm -hmm. that one that one experience could hook them for uh, give them an addiction for life. Yeah, but, because but... we we have something in our world called the slippy slope, and what that is, you see, there comes a point where you can keep, you can make mistakes, you can make errors, but there come a point where those errors you can't come back from them. Yeah, like all hell break loose, you know. You understand? Yeah. And so, so what I'm saying to you, Ali, who guides you? Yeah, I mean, I've heard the story of a woman. She put her kids in in a, in a, in a hot water. She killed them. You know, this this could happen to anyone. You know. You heard what? It, yeah, about a woman. She lives in Boston, I think. She 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 put her kids in hot water, boiling water. She killed she killed the, her kids. I, I I mean, and I question that. I say. What the hell? Why she did that? Why, why, why did she do that to her kid? And all I can actually, you know, understand from it 
is that you know we should we should always you know be cautious and you know no, but who and, guides and, you and, 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 and make, making decisions what's your I, source of right I, and wrong what's your I, source of right and wrong i i guide myself based on what i've learned what, what i've seen what i've uh, i mean by questioning by you know rational uh, rational thinking you know i think so so you don't drink alcohol or go clubbing or nothing like that no i mean if you actually alcohol is bad i think if alcohol was invented in our age or they they will prevent it i think but uh in general if people can drink you know not a lot i don't think there's a problem with that but i you mean don't. alcohol in general it's 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 bad so i mean if someone asked me uh do i i mean do uh like uh, can i drink alcohol or do you think alcohol is good i, I said no don't drink this as a but if you if you can if you can handle i think this is uh this is i mean up to him mm -hmm. okay i'll let the doctor and the boss take over now Boss, i'm sorry if i bother you guys i'm sorry no 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 no, 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 no you're no. sorry yeah, this is really me. interesting actually this is interesting my boss is did you want to ask something or? No, no, I, I want you to come in then shall i I'll, I'll come in you said lots of things uh brother ali in your conversation and there's so many points that i want to make but i, I don't know where to start from really because <laughs> Sure, um, sorry. Because there's lots of things that you said, which are, which from someone who denies the existence of God. So I want to clarify something because you said you don't believe in the Abrahamic God. So does that mean you don't believe in God? There, there can be a God, or you're not sure if God. Are you definitely I'm, I'm, believing I'm, that God doesn't exist? Are you I'm, saying I'm, that I'm not you're not sure God. if God exists? I'm nibbity. I'm nibbity. I'm nibbity. I'm God. I don't think He exists. Maybe you don't believe. You don't yeah. believe there is God. No, there's omniscient, omnipotent God. The, I mean, if he's omniscient, omnipotent, I think he would make a better world than this. So, so definitionally, God is uh, omniscient and uh, om omnipotent. Um, so, if you're saying that 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 can't exist, then you're can, really saying can, that can, God can doesn't exist. Can I say exist. something? Can I say something? Uh, I've yeah. watched a debate between, uh, I think, Christopher Hitchin and uh, a Jewish rabbi. He said that the omnipotent, omniscient God, it's not a, the Jewish God. They don't view the God as omniscient and omnipotent. It's just this has been added to to Judaism by I think I don't know. He's talked about the, some philosophers. They uh, they when they uh, define the God of the Old Testament. Sure. Uh, so this is why we're not talking about religion at the moment. Yeah. No, no. But but, uh, but so I'm, the first. So let's but, let's go back to the basics um, sure, because I want to come to your example of the woman who burnt her who boiled her children alive because I think this is important. But before I come to that. Um, let's let me let me read something to you. Sure, have you heard of uh, have you heard of a physicist called Alexander Vilenkin? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay, so he wrote a paper in two thousand and twelve, um, which asked the question: Did the universe have a beginning? This is the actual title of the paper. Yeah. So I'm going to read you two paragraphs from this: the beginning and the end. Yeah. Go ahead. And this is to clarify for you whether or not the universe had a beginning, uh, likely or not, using the using your you know because you, you believe science is the only way to uh, have have any truth, which is problematic. But let's leave that for now. And I'm reading now. Quote: One of the most basic questions in cosmology is whether the universe had a beginning or has simply existed forever. It was addressed. It was addressed in the singularity theorems of Penrose and Hawking with the conclusion that the initial singularity could is not avoidable. These theorems rely on the strong energy conditions and on certain assumptions about the global structure of space-time. There are, however, three popular scenarios which circumvent the th these theorems. Eternal inflation, a cyclical universe, and an emergent universe which exists for eternity as a static seed for expanding. Here we shall argue that none of these scenarios can actually be past eternal. So he's saying here there's three basic, of all of the different theories of the beginning of the universe, there are three basic ones that claim the universe is eternal in the past. Eternal inflation, a cyclic universe, and an emergent universe. And what he says, and, and I'm just now going to go to the conclusion of the paper. It's a 2012 paper, you can look it up. He goes through the, the calculations for whether this is plausible, that these theorems could do away with the beginning of the universe. And he says this, and this is the conclusion. At this point, I'm quoting that, at this point, it seems that the answer to the question, did the universe have a beginning? At this point, it seems the answer to this question is probably yes. Here we have addressed three scenarios that seem to offer a way to avoid a beginning, and I found that none of them actually 
can be eternal in the past. I'm going to end the quote there. Now, this is uh, someone who's who's a physicist, whose job it is to study the universe and the origins of the universe, who's done a, who's on a mathematical analysis of the theorems that talk about can the universe be eternal or not, three of them. And he said that the, the mathematically they can't be. Now, you trust science. This is the claim that you made. Um, so science, this is an evidence, uh, an evidence from amongst science that the universe can't be eternal. It has to have a, a beginning. beginning. Again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I, I read there read actually, uh, they call, uh, his name is Thomas Aquinas. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He's a priest, yeah. a Catholic priest. Yeah. He, 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 he presented five arguments. Uh, yeah. I don't remember them now, but I, I, I've read them. Uh, it, it makes sense. But as I said, is not God of Abraham. I no, we can come to that. That's a, that's a second question, my brother. Yeah? yeah. So the first question is: the universe itself has a beginning. Okay, and that's yeah, the probably, that's the yeah. consensus so far. Unless you you can you may find exceptions to the rule, but generally this is the this is the whole idea that uh, the universe had a beginning. So now the question is: how did that? What caused that beginning? What was the cause of that beginning? We just don't know. I mean, there's, we don't have a method to, to know that. Okay, let me ask you a simple question. Can uh, a woman give birth to herself? Uh, she can't. No, one can. No, okay. So can the universe create itself? Mm, can't. No, okay. So you need something other than the woman to give birth to her, and you need something other than the universe to create itself. Do we agree on this? Case yeah, in point? Sure, sure. Okay. So to create the universe this thing that is not the universe, what qualities do you think it needs to have? If you just do an analysis using your the intellect that you have evolved over billions of years, what do you think you need to have to be able to cause uh, the universe? What sort of qualities? Uh, yeah, here's, actually, this is, this is the, the problem, you can say. Uh, you know... I don't think God can create some uh, create a rock that He can lift. Yeah, okay, so these that. are absurd, but Brother Ali, you're not answering the question. Yeah, but, but, so we're not talking about uh, you know underwater hair dryers I mean, or maybe, rocks. Maybe, maybe, brother maybe Ali, brother Ali, creator. one second, one sure, second, Ali, sure, brother sure. Ali, sorry, brother Ali. The 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 questions you're bringing are nonsensical. C can I I'll give you an example? Is there such a thing as a four sided triangle? No, it's not a triangle. Why not? Why not? Why not? Because it's not a triangle. No, I want you to draw me a four-sided triangle, please. I can't. Okay, so these, so these questions you're asking are these types of absurdities. They have no, they make no sense. So asking these questions are absurd types of questions. The question really is now that you agreed with me that the universe needs to have something outside of itself to cause it. Uh, so the question now that so we have to follow the line. You can't be jumping off. Uh, you know, you, sure. you're you can't be jumping to well, another line of questioning. What we're talking about. You have to follow the thing. So right. can so ha, what qualities does this cause, which is external to the universe, other than the universe, have? What qualities must it have to cause the universe? What does it? What do you need? As uh, he has to be powerful, I think. Okay, agreed. Uh, yeah, Anything he else? Be, he has to be powerful. Uh, there's a, if he's not created or not, or he's created. This is, I think, it's a, doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's let's talk about that. So we've agreed it has to be powerful. Yeah. Okay, at, at least at least as powerful as the amount of energy and matter within the universe, which is phenomenally powerful. But you said it doesn't matter if it's created or not. Now, does a created thing need something to create it? Uh, a creator, yeah, it does, right? Okay, so if the created thing needs something to create it, then we just go back a step. It doesn't, it doesn't change this. It has to end so somewhere. This, this, yeah. So if we if we keep doing this step, then we go back into this idea of a eternal past, which we know mathematically isn't possible. So we have to go then to this beginning, and that beginning has to be caused by something that itself doesn't need a cause. Yeah, the end has to finish with this fundamental foundational thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this thing is not like a created thing because itself it would need an explanation for why it's there. And we know that has, this line has to end. Yeah. yeah. And you would agree that it's all powerful. So un, not like the universe, i.e. not a creation and powerful. Anything else? 
I don't know, merciful, I guess. <laughs> Sorry? It has to be merciful. No, the mercy is not uh, in, in this so far. We can yeah, come but to I mean, it's out of topic. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, we'll I agree with you. We'll come to I your agree. problem of evil, because I like your problem of evil. It's my favorite topic, but we'll come to that afterwards. Look, I don't mean to ask this question, but I mean, it's just bugging me. I want to I, I wanna ask someone who knows, who can actually explain them to me, you know. Maybe I'm, I'm getting it wrong or something, you know. That's why I ask you guys. That's why we're discussing, my brother. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Okay, so you said uncreated. We've agreed on that this this first cause has to be uncreated, has to be powerful. Anything else? Oh yeah, uh, I think that's it. Powerful. Come on, Hamza, I'll let you carry on for a moment. Sure, go ahead, Hamza. No, I'm not going to carry on. I'm just going to help him. So, okay. I th I'm pretty sure intelligence has well, to play. A part. Yeah, wise, wise God. Yeah, I guess he has wisdom. And why do they have to have wisdom? Yeah, he has. No, if he's if he's uh, if he's omnipotent, yeah, he has to be. Uh, he has to have uh, wisdom. If he's a uh, why? I'm asking the question why. Because he's gonna be a judge, you know. So, no, but the judge is later. And, so you're bringing the wrong uh, thinking, my brother. You've got no, to understand no. the question. The question you're being asked. So sorry, Imran. I'm just gonna go, go for it, please. Forget forget religion. Forget religion. Forget heaven, hellfire, all this stuff, right? The question is being asked, to create a universe, what qualities would, would you need to create a universe? So look at the universe we have today. Look at the design. Look at the orchestration and everything within it. Yeah. And ask yourself, what qualities would you need to create something of that nature? So we said powerful, of course. We said intelligent, of course. What else would you need to have the capabilities to create a universe? That's the question. Forget being merciful. That's, that's so, neither here nor there yeah, at this so, particular juncture. So, so sorry. Uh, so yeah, based on the universe, the, the you know, I mean, the, our world is splendid, I guess, and he has to have uh, intelligence, right? Yeah, so intelligence too. Okay, so you're, I think you're being a little bit tongue in cheek there when you say our world is splendid because you've just spoken about the problem of evil, which we'll come to. I so let's uh, no, it's okay, no brother. Yeah, I understand. Uh, you know, the, we're human beings. It's no problem. I really do feel for you in the sense that you feel this world is a terrible place and we can discuss that but the first point is that we've agreed that the universe mathematically is unlikely to have a beginning um i, I quoted the paper from 2012 by professor yeah. valenkin we've agreed that the universe that the the universe therefore has to have an initial cause because mm. a woman can't give birth to herself the universe, across, so i think he said cannot, it cannot doesn't matter itself. if there's a creator or not yeah because yeah. that's yeah. whether it matters or, no no and he's, he's a scientist yeah, brother Ali, mm -hmm. he, there's one thing about mattering or not, and the one thing about whether or not it uh, has a cause or not. They're two different questions. So, for example, someone might say to you, brother Ali, I don't care if this woman has burned her children alive. It doesn't matter. Now, you will say, well, it may not matter to you, but it's something that I, you, it matters to you personally, brother Ali. Yeah. So the question isn't about mattering. The question is, is about get, getting to using your rationality on your intellect to get to a reasonable position yeah you understand yeah, so understand. if the if the if this cause which is all power which caused the universe which is all powerful and which is not like the creation is outside of time because the creation obviously time started when the creation started and it, it causes the universe to exist then it must have a will to do that because otherwise the universe would have always existed and we know the universe doesn't always exist it's 13.4 whatever that is billion years mm -hmm. old yeah. So we have these properties available now. The, these are quite these are quite clear and rational from just thinking about it. Do you do you disagree with any of them? No, I don't. Okay, so I think it's reasonable then to say that the universe had a had a creator who has these we can say will power who's outside of time and uh, and, and and space. Not, not like the what, what do you mean by will? He has a will, so he can. Well, if he the, can control if the, things, he can move the, uh, move things. Yeah, yeah. He, he has the will. He can ha he can desire to create the universe and create it. Let's say he has only intelligence and power. Yeah, and but intelligence he, requires will. He left the world. No, no. The uh, intelligence, the is, it, bro yeah, brother. Sure. Intelligence means you can't be intelligent without a will, because then you're just a machine. Yes. Mm. So is a robot intelligent? I mean, 
Your brother is a robot intelligent. No, the robot they they are programmed to to do. Yeah, absolutely. Things. So yeah, you have intelligence. You need to have will. Yes. Sure. You need to have. You need to be able to think independently. You need to have sure. a will. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. To make sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. So then, then now we can start to get to the questions of, uh, of the of of religion because now we've established this initial cause. Now the other thing question that comes is okay, is there many of these or one of these? Causes. Uh, no, we, we actually said uh, he has to be uncreated, so it has to be one cause, I think, right? Yeah, so the reason for it is, yeah, I agree with you, one cause, but the reason for it is quite specific. Imagine you had two gods, and this is a chronic argument I'm using with you. The, mm -hmm. Is the universe uh, uniform? Can we have laws within yeah, the universe that we can see? Other. Yeah, absolutely. So if if the if one of the gods said, you know what, I want the sun to go from east to west, and the other one said, I want we want to go from west to east, who would be, who would who would uh, who would have that, uh, who would win the argument? Yeah, yeah. So having two, uh, I mean that's a contradiction in the term. Two old absolute beings or two uh, of these uh, beings it makes no sense. So and the fact that the universe is eternal, it's, it is uh, going to be. Uh, uh, uniform, the universe is uniform, we would have one absolute creator. Then we can start talking about the religion. So I'll let, I'll let brother, uh, other brothers step in for a moment and I'll, and I'll join again. Sure. Brothers? Yeah, uh, I mean, so so Ali, you've, you've come to the point where you rationally accept the need for something that causes the universe to come into existence and will is something, if the universe comes into existence at a certain point in a certain way, then you have to have a will to be able to do that, right? Yeah, right. So are you now accepting that there has to be something that causes the universe, that has to be intelligent, that has to have a will, uh, that has to have the ability, incredibly powerful and incredibly intelligent, because we have laws that govern uh, uh, you know, uh, how the universe works, yeah, which are incredibly energy. complex and incredibly, uh, uh, you know, re require a minutiae, the incredible smallest amounts of, of values, are, you know, from the decimal point onwards, hundreds and hundreds of decimal places for it to actually even function. So it, 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 this all shows an exceptional amount of intelligence and, and ability. So do you accept all of this then? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I accept. So, so we would say that this is Allah. What what problem do you have with that, basically? I don't have a problem with that. What, what I'm saying is, uh, I mean, when I read the religions, the, uh, I mean, the Quran is wonderful. Some part of it, some part of it, I think it's questionable. And okay. we can, we so, can, Ali, when you, we, when can you... we can use our intellect. The Quran asks us to use our intellect to yes. understand them, but they're ambiguous as well. So, right. So, Ali, when you make the judgment that something is wrong or undesirable, what is the mechanism that you use to arrive at that conclusion? Uh, you study, I think, the social effects of, of that, right. that belief, or right. Yeah, and so, I think, I think religion in general. Yes, uh, has played uh, uh, you can say a wrong rule in, in human lives. Uh, okay, so we'll deal we'll deal with that in a minute. Separates the people. Uh, yeah, so we division, we'll, we'll deal with that so part of it in a minute. Supremacy, uh, uh, Ali. We'll deal with that like part that. of it in a minute. What we'll deal with first is you arrive at a certain conclusion about things being right or wrong, just or unjust, fair or unfair, based upon your ability and your investigation right yeah okay and what is your ability and your investigation influenced by uh, first of all uh, I, I was trying to become like a devout muslim uh, brother uh, ali i've asked you a question sure. and that question that question is that that mechanism that you said that you use is your your understanding to judge between what is good and bad, yes? What I'm asking you is, what is that influenced by? Because it doesn't come from a vacuum, does it? 
No, by now uh, it's the harm principle. I, I think it's okay. Uh, so it comes from a so it comes from a a, a way of thinking from the uh, from the harm principle. And where does that harm principle come from? From some uh, some English, I think, uh, intellectual in the right. 18th century. Uh, yes, John Stuart Mill, I think. And to be able to judge what is harmful and what is beneficial. Can you do that with limited knowledge and limited understanding? Uh, I think we should be cautious when we decide something as, as, as good or bad. Yes. Uh, human in general, they I think uh, by by their innate their nature, you know, they can know what's right, what's wrong, and but in certain limitation. Do but human the, the, beings do human beings make many mistakes and have they made many mistakes throughout yeah, history? Sure, sure. Yes? Yeah. And is that despite being quite sure of themselves that actually what they're doing That's is the, right? The desire actually most of the time plays yes. a part, yeah. So my point to you, brother Ali, is this that the mechanism that you said that you use is your judgment. And your judgment is influenced by a teaching about the harm principle. And the harm principle is something that somebody or a group of people have decided as to what is harmful and what is good for us, right? They haven't decided. They said, okay, if, if a certain act would harm somebody, so we should not practice it. Yes. You know what I mean? I understand. And it can, it can, it can evolve. Brother Ali, brother Ali. Why is that? Why is that right? Uh, I don't say it's right, uh, either wrong. But I say it's the best way, actually. To How do you know it's the best life. way? How do you know it's the best way? Because we've tried, we've tried to get our morals from faith and from other other resources, and it didn't work. I think it's just. So, uh, so no, hang on a sec, brother. One second, sure, one second. Because what you're answer, what you're not answering the question I'm asking. You said that you have. You said that this is the best way. How do you know it's the best way? It's, it's not the best. I mean, it's, it's what we have. I mean, no, I it's think not it's, what we have because there are many ways, right? There are many ways, and so, I so think why, it, it why, why, why are you giving this specific way? Because uh, why are you saying it's the best it's, way? If it's social effects on the society, I'd say. Give me an example. I mean, prosperity, uh, you know, coexistence, uh, accepting others. Uh, really? Yeah. Where is that? Where is this? Where is this? Term? I mean, I know, I know the European had a uh, uh, bad history, but. Uh, no, no, no. Well, which which uh, but, brother, my brother. Sure. In the last 20 years, mm -hmm. millions of people have been killed by the West. Millions. By fanatics, no, that's, religious that's, fanatics. One, no, no, wait, the United second, States. Hang on, my brother. One second. Sure. The, because the, you, these societies are based on the ideas that you're presenting, and they've killed millions of people. Millions. They, of people. they, they were religious fanatics, except uh, Tony Blair. No, 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 no. Not at all. But Bush. Not at all. Brother, brother, fanatics. brother. Come on. So the, inv the invasion. No, hang on a sec. These are secular countries. Secular, yeah. 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 Yep. Secular countries based upon liberalism. Why are they secular? Uh, I mean, the First World War and the Second World War. I think they they are secular and no, no. Why are why are these countries secular? Say atheists. We can blame no, atheists uh, for brother. Why yeah. are these countries secular? Why are they secular? Because they when they decided because they were killing each other. Who were killing each other? Yeah, back in the day, uh, in the 15th century or the 16th century. So there was like the protestant killing the uh, catholic killing protestant and saying so what happened so, so, so what they happened say let's, let's separate let's separate the church i mean they they do the separation of okay state so they the separated church. the church from, from the, the state not uh, the state not to deny what was the, the consequence church. of that what was the consequence of that mm. uh, there's no the now world. there's no oh, longer uh, there's no uh, longer uh, church in the world i guess there, there's no longer church guiding morality so they had to come up with another way to be moral, right? No, the the the, the societies, the European yeah. societies, were so influenced pre, by Christianity you're, you're, because brother Ali, it's you're the hearing culture. The question, brother Ali, you're hearing the question I'm asking. No, I so don't, there oh, was no, I'm sorry. there was so when the church and state were separated, there wasn't a way for them to use religion to be moral, so they had to devise another way. 
Yeah. So what did yeah. they do? They, they came, came up, up with, with this hand, uh, with a hand plant. This liberalism that you're presenting, which is mm -hmm. secularism, as a manifestation of this. Yeah. Yeah. Democracy is a manifestation of this. Yeah. The democracy is old. It's old. Yeah. Than it is. It religions. is. But in, yeah. within these countries, I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. So this is this is where it came from. Now, when 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 it came. When these when these thinkers started to come and think, okay, now we have to come up with a way of trying to uh, have some morals. And brother Abbas talked about the harm principle. Let's let's leave the harm principle for a moment. But they started to come up with these ideas. What's the most fundamental idea? You you talked about uh, equality. Is that right? Equality, yeah, I guess. Okay, what's that based upon? To tell me how you can come to the conclusion of uh, people people being equal. Why is that? Why why should that be the case? On what basis? And you cannot refer to religion in any of this, my brother. Yeah, you no, have to no. refer to non-religious ideas, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. So you're asking so, me. Well, if... What is the basis for assuming that people are equal? By the the right by you know everyone has a right has rights. No, no. Why? Why, my brother? Because we are all human, doesn't matter where we come from, it doesn't matter where. Why where, are we equal, my brother? Why are we equal? Because we, we're equal. We are. We are. Why? Free. On what basis are you saying that? Because this is within us. We believe that we have rights, and we no, should no, protect you're, these no, rights. No, my brother. You see what you're you're making. So you're a scientist, scientist, scientifically minded. And no, you're no, making. I'm just no, you said that science thinking. was the way to understand truth, right? Yeah, that's the and only the way state, we have. The and state, we have the, the state and the church were separated. The church and the church, the church and the state were separated. So mm -hmm. then the people had to refer to the um, the Enlightenment thinkers to come up with ideas who were who were similarly atheistic. They didn't believe that because after Darwin, they thought, well, you know, God is dead, right? So they have to come up with their own ideas. Now, evolutionarily, scientifically, there's no equality between human beings. You know, sure. Abbas is so, tall, strong, I'm there's, small, there's small and fat, problem. and, uh, you know, uh, Hamza is extremely handsome, you know, uh, very intelligent. We, we are all different in our qualities. So what, yeah, sure. what is Someone it about us that is equal? Sure. What is it about us that is equal, uh, brother? Uh, you know, how, how can I say it? It's a general idea. We believe that. We no, no, all you can't, brother. So when when you judge so, when you judge when you judge a person on when when you try to connect with a person, you believe that he's the same. He has the same rights as you do. So, no, brother, but but this is the question, I mean? brother. It's, uh, it's brother, a principle actually. It's yeah, a, I understand. So the, it, what I'm man, asking you is, where does your principle come from? Because it's not scientific principle. Th through knowledge, through uh, you know, rational thinking. I think no, no. Can, can... Why is it rational? This is what I'm asking you. Why is it rational to believe that human beings are equal? Because we can believe that the outcome of treating people as equal could be better for humanity. No, you I can't think. use the brother. You can't use the term equal in your definition. Yeah. Why is it that rationally human beings are equal? Why do you say this? What's your basis for this? I mean, you see, you, I have to talk about a source. Yeah, I think you've got to have a reason why you yeah, believe it. It's it's rationality, I think. Rational thinking could could bring you to that to that end to understand that. No, no. So all... okay, explain to me rationally why. Uh, let's let's take uh, brother Abbas and brother Hamza. You can see them above. Uh -huh. Give me a reason rationally why they are equal. They both as human beings. Guess, Tell uh, me why. Uh, they're equal because they're human. They are like me. They breathe. They they have the same color of my blood. They we all the same, you know. Yeah, they are equal. No, no, they're, they're not the same. Like brother Abbas is mashallah, nice coat, nice uh, bronze no, color. You got a brother Hamza who's white. Their beards are different colors. They speak different uh, combinations of languages. Mm -hmm. They have different IQs. They have different heights. They have different incomes. They're different homes. They have different partners. What is it about them that is the same? The humanity, they're equal. So, yeah, you can't really take advantage of any one of them. No, no. Why? So you're making I the can't, claims you're I making. Can't, I can't. So the I can't claims you're making, brother Ali, because... the claims that you're making are mm. metaphysical claims. Claims about equality between human beings are not claims that are based in science or rationality. Or, or, yeah. 
yeah, we can touch it. Yeah, metaphysical it's, it's claims. Metaphysical. That means that they are. You're making an assumption that's not scientifically or materially validated. But they're good, right? Sorry? They're good when you believe what, that what all is human, good? human are equal. That's a good thing. Yeah, but the, I agree with you. It's good. The question yeah. is, why do you believe it? Now, I have a reason for this. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I want to <laughs> hear your because, reason. Because, yeah, the reason uh, is because the, religion here. because the religion teaches it. Sure. So Allah says in the Quran it. that everyone, everyone is equal in His eyes, except for those who differ only in piety. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Taqwa. So taqwa. now oh, I have. So if you ask me, and if you ask Brother Hamza, you ask Brother Abbas, we have a specific reason. To tell you why human beings are equal. Why? Because the religion specifically teaches it. So the revelation we have from that creator who we established earlier tells so us let, so. Now say, you, are, you are someone who's following the atheistic philosophers and the scientists, you have to come up with a reason. Now your reason is it's a nice thing to do, but that's you know, my with all due respect, is not an answer. It's not an answer, it's just maybe subjective opinion or because some people they say no, yeah. we don't believe that we're equal. So I mean, if, if that, some, that, yeah, that. so here we go. Now no, that's a great so point. You made a great point, brother Ali. So if there was somebody who said, you know what, we're not equal. Uh, we are better than you. You are X and we are Y. We are better than you. In fact, we're going to kill six million of you because we are better than you. Why would they be wrong, brother Ali? Actually, John Stuart Mill he wrote an essay saying that in India when it was. Uh, struggle they say because we're better in moral i mean the principle I, i'm saying okay what's interesting is the principle ali ali we can ali, take it and ali, we can adopt it ali, so good. ali yeah sure, sure you was asked a very specific question could you respond to the actual question uh sorry uh what was your question brother i'm wrong all okay, right his, his question was um on, yeah his question was a simple one it was basically um if somebody decides that they're more equal than somebody else and decide to kill six million of them because they believe they're better than them, how could, on what basis can you say they were wrong? Because uh, it's unjustified, I think, to to go and kill six million people. Why? And, like going genocidal. It's why this this because it's wrong. Why? Why? Because if if you're gonna kill six. You're going to kill six million people. You're going to have a reason. You're going to have uh, an yeah, evidence they, they, that they yeah, commit the reason something. Clear. The commit reason something. is that they are better than them. I wouldn't take that. They don't they, because it, because because this idea that all peoples are equal is subjective. You said if some people think that they are better than you, they can kill you, and they're fine. There's no reason. That's fine for them. No, but you know, I deserve to be alive, and you don't. So I'm going to kill you. This is what they think. Oh, this is injustice and be based because if you're going to kill somebody... I think, I think gotta... Brother Ali, you know the sure. problem that you're having here, if you're honest, sure, go ahead. is that you cannot say what is good or what is bad grounded in what you believe gives you the answers to truth, which is science. And that is the point, Brother Ali. You're having to turn to something else, another foundational axiom that you're relying upon and you're making a judgment that, you know, killing people is wrong, let's say for argument's sake, or persecuting somebody is wrong. But if you are honest, that very foundational belief is not coming from your paradigm, which is science. And you can't make that claim even from what you say that we believe or we accept, or we have come to this rational we uh, conclusion, right? Exactly. And the reason why you can't do that, Brother Ali, is that we, as a group, tomorrow could come up with a different conclusion. And you would have to argue that that would be right. In other words, your sense of morality and right and wrong, at best, has to be very fluid. It has to be reliant upon social consensus, in effect. And we know historically that social consensus has often got it very wrong. We can demonstrate today, for example, you know, in just very recent times, you talk about history, we talk about very recent history. Sure. You know, Dick Cheney in America said that we invaded Iraq because it was in the American interest. Yes? But, but they, now, they you are, would say, are, well, you might argue... They, they are fanatics. They believe in the Book of Revelation. 
Bushy said, I invaded Iraq because Gaga and Magaga are coming from there. Yeah, but hold on a second. Yeah, I mean, this, I mean, is, this is the person I mean, who's not quoting the Bible. He's not doing it because of the Bible. He's saying it's in our interest. It's in our strategic interest, our military interest, our financial interest. Because he, quali he, he, brother Ali, he qualifies he why. Same, I think. Brother Ali, brother Ali, one second. It's better that we don't talk over each other. Sorry. He qualifies why he invaded Iraq. He said it was in the American interest, and then he said we couldn't have somebody like Saddam Hussein controlling the largest untapped oil reserves in the world and holding America to ransom. So he moralized, he made it a moral uh, a moral argument as to why he went and killed, subsequently killed, over a million civilians in Iraq. Now, I ask you the question, show me where his, his uh, rationale is flawed when it comes to your worldview. How would you tell him that he was wrong? He's wrong because, first of all, America... Uh, I mean, represent democracy and human rights and all that. And uh, what he did, in, I mean, what they did in Iraq was was totally against all of that. It was just in, in just, you know, it was unbelievable what they did. And yeah, and the outcome of that's very clear, I think, to right. prove that he so was So you born. would say to Dick Cheney that you're wrong because it goes against the very human rights that you guys profess. Profess, yeah. And hypocrisy. Therefore, That's hypocrisy. And, 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 and therefore it is wrong. But he could turn around and say, but this was a, a strategically important decision that we had to make I mean, for our own salvation in the world. Uh, I think uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't even good for them as well. So no, well, that's, it was wrong that's a, in all aspects. Brother Ali, that's a separate yeah, point. Brother Ali, that's a separate point. Wrong. The, point the, that point. I'm the point that I'm trying to make to you here, Brother Ali, sure. is that how would you convince him that he is wrong from a matter of fact as certainty? Because at the moment, all you're doing is giving your opinion. Yeah, well, that's all I can do, actually. <laughs> exactly. And that's the point. And that's the point that I was trying to make to you initially. It's yeah. just your opinion. It doesn't make it wrong or right. It's just simply your opinion. Now, what would make it wrong or what would make it right is something that transcends your opinion. And this is why when you were touching on the problem of evil, which Imran might want to go into, because mashallah, he's a lot better at explaining it than I am. But we also believe that God is all wise. So when something happens, Ali, that you might not perceive as being good, as Allah says in the Quran, that you may hate something that may be good for you. And you may like something that is actually harmful to you. Because I am all wise, and that's Allah saying that. Allah mm -hmm. is all wise. And Ali, you are not all wise. So sure. your decision making is based upon social consensus. What do the what do the people around me say? And whatever they say, I will agree with. Because oh, I think hold me one second. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. And Ali, just one second. I just want to address the comment section. You know how long we do these streams and what we do and what this is about. Now, we know Ali here, he, he is kind of stumbling here, there and whatever. It's not a problem. But there are many, many, many Ali's out there who are thinking in the same way as Ali, whether they were uh, Muslim and left Islam because they didn't understand certain things or whatever. Maybe. Maybe they're non-Muslims and they're looking at Islam. And these are questions they've got as well. Remember one thing. It's not always about the person we're speaking to. And you should have enough wisdom now from the enough experience watching what we do that we're not necessarily addressing Ali. Yeah. Uh, and so these are these are key points, the way that Dr. Imran schooled the whole flex and the way that Abbas is going now. There are many people out there who this may resonate with. So uh, please have some patience. There's no one backstage and there's a Muslim and there's someone who I don't know who that guy is. So alhamdulillah, we've got Ali here and we're milking him. And we're showing um, how you deal with this situation Mahmoud. when you're doing your dawah, when, when you're speaking to people about Islam, yeah. or you're trying to question an atheist or someone who's as, asking about the question of evil. So please, something. I'm sick please. of reading. I'll move on. This guy's boring. Relax. This is what we do. I want to okay? say right. something. Carry on. I, I, I didn't. Uh, if someone asked me, what do you believe? I would say I'm a Muslim. 
the thing I don't believe in God, the creator, the omnipotent, omniscient God, but I'm culturally Muslim. I fast but, Ramadan, but, but brother, but Ali, there's, there's no such thing as culturally Muslim because Muslim means the one who submits to the will of the creator accepts that the creator exists, does not attribute partners to the creator and accepts the guidance from the creator. Uh, this is what the definition of Muslim means. So if a person says, I'm Muslim, but I don't believe in God, or I don't believe in the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jesus, the God of Muhammad, peace be upon him, definitionally, they cannot be Muslim. They're not Muslim because I, they don't fit. I was, I was born in that culture. I didn't well, decide to choose is, or not. So right, it's right. but brother it's Ali, in, I, you see, look, Ali, this is the point here. And this is a very important point that you've just made here, you see. Sure. You are presuming something about yourself in reality, with the surety that I am Muslim, when definitionally you don't even fit that within the very basic definition of what Muslim is. And this is why, Brother Ali, that your opinions ultimately, and my opinions ultimately, or Imran's or Hamza's opinions ultimately, actually don't matter. matter. And the reason why they don't matter is because it's Allah who defines what a Muslim is, not you or me. Sure. You see, and that's the point here. And this is where we have to be humble, you see. Sure. Yeah. That we can't say, oh, I am such and such thing, when in reality you don't even fit the definition according to the one okay. who actually okay. said can, what Muslim Can is. I say I have doubt? I have doubt about religion? Yeah, of course. Religion. People I mean, it's just doubt. That's not, that's I mean, not an issue. You guys are but, I, but I go back to my point, it, brother right? Ali. I go back to my point. My point is that so your much. assessment of good and bad is based upon your limited knowledge of what's happening around you, right? And that data is constantly changing. So in England, for example, in medieval times, you know, wine and beer, these th spirits were good. And the reason why they were good is because water would actually kill you because the water was polluted. It had all these problems in there, right? Mm -hmm. So you drank wine as a matter of, uh, uh, you know, getting your your daily allowance of, of fluids, right? Yeah. But today we would recognize that actually that would make you an alcoholic. That would make you have deep problems, right? Serious problems. Now, you said, Brother Ali, a little bit of alcohol is good. No, it's not good. I said if he can drink a lot, if he can handle alcohol. Yes. I don't, I don't know. I mean, how can I prove that it's wrong? If because just science just disagrees to... with you, Brother Ali, because there's the latest scientific reports are that even small amounts of alcohol affect the brain and affect a person in their old age, and they do affect your health. Even small amounts of alcohol. What affects your So now well, the point here is this, Brother Ali. Can you, can, can you see what's just happened here, Brother Ali? You have made a comment that I believe if you can handle it and if you can have small amounts of alcohol, then it, there's no harm. It, but And yet, the very science that you said that you rely upon as a guide of what is good and bad is actually telling you that it's bad. But as I said, food also can harm you if you eat a lot. Uh, but we're not talking about food. food here. We're talking about your I mean, statement every, regarding alcohol. I mean, when you when you over uh, eat or drink. We're not talking about food here, Brother Ali. Let's stick to it's the example thing. because your example was a little bit of alcohol, if you can handle it, it's good, right? And you don't think mm. it's harmful. But the I very... Cri um, but I, didn't the very say, I didn't say it's harmful. I said if someone asked me, uh, what do you think of alcohol? I'd say alcohol is bad. Don't drink if you can, if you can live without drinking. We, sure, we've go got ahead. another atheist in the back. Should we bring him on to help? Uh, yeah, fine. Who's the... Victor, who's... Just, switch, just one second. Victor, before you come on, switch on your camera just backstage so we can see you. And then you can switch it off again. You may be able to help you, Ali. Answer some. There you go, Victor. Oh, Victor's looking. Oh, looking swish, bro. Looking swish. Okay, Victor, we'll get. Hey, you on Victor's here. Okay. Hey, dude. dude. <laughs> so, so, brother Ali, you can keep your camera on or off. It's up to you. So, okay. so, brother you Ali, would you have to agree, at least in principle, using your logic and reason, mm -hmm. that if this creator that created the universe has the intelligence? the ability and the power to create this universe, then this creator, whatever this creator might be, whether it's the Abrahamic God or not the Abrahamic God, whatever it might be, 
would probably know what is good and what is bad. Should I add something here? Well, I'd like to ask Brother Ali first, if that's sure. okay. If he, but you can uh, help him out, Victor, no problem. And oh, after sure, Ali if, can, if, he wanna, if he wants to answer, he can. But uh, what I say, uh, yeah, he, he could, yeah. He could uh, know what's good, what's not bad. He could, not he could. But on balance of probability, this creator that created this universe with its infinite complication, you know, uh, uh, with, with, with such complex laws... Yeah. that has yeah. managed to create all this abundant life on this earth, would you say on balance of probability, the chances are that this level of intelligence would probably know what's good and bad? He has to be all-knowing. If, he, if he's all-knowing, he would know. But, uh, yeah, if he... Yeah, sure. Right. I mean, Victor can... So, uh, so, so Ali, it. my point to you would be this then. Sure. Would it not be wise, since you have rationally accepted the, the, the possibility, the realistic possibility on balance of probability that this creator exists, that you try to engage with what this creator is saying to you, verifying, of course, that this, this is what the creator has said, and then taking that guidance and where you fall short in terms of perhaps understanding something like al alcohol that we just discussed now, for example, Allah says in the Quran that the harm outstrips, the sin outstrips the good, and this is why we have made it forbidden for you, that it would probably be very wise to follow that teaching. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, Victor. All right. Uh, I have two different points I could bring up concerning this. I'm not sure which one I should bring up first, but uh, well, for, first of all, m morals, for, as far as we know, are are subjective. I mean, it depends, of course. If like there is now hypothetically some greater power that somehow can determine things that we can't, but then comes the second question. How could we possibly know that with, as you said, our limited knowledge and understanding? Like, even if a God comes to us, how can we know for sure that he is who and what he says he is? The question is, wouldn't he design us so that we would just know by default without, without having to figure it out? Because, I mean, if we... It, if we just listen to what he says, how do we know if he's just not just some very powerful being with uh, beyond our comprehension who's taking advantage of us? Uh, Victor, that's a really good uh, couple of questions that you've asked there, actually. So the question that you've uh, at the fun, uh, you've asked several things there, but actually, I'd like to deal with one of the last things that you raised. How would we know whether this creator exists and whether what information we have from this creator is actually from that creator, yes? Yeah. How, how do you think you would do that, Victor? I don't know. Would you perhaps evaluate the claims that these different scriptures or the claims that this, is, this information has come from the creator by perhaps the several major religions in the world? Would you do that? Would you scrutinize those claims? Well, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily scrutinize it. It's just that there's so many different religions. Do we go by what's popular? Because that would be the ad populum fa uh, fallacy, argument of ad populum fallacy. So, well, not, not, not really. Can I just rephrase the question a little bit, Abbas? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Victor, how do you mean? All mm. right. So if this creator exists, how would you know anything about it? Sorry? If a creator exists, how could we know anything about it? Well, I don't... <laughs> I don't know. Well, there's only one way, isn't there? Hmm? Well, it, if it reveals about itself. I, I, I genuinely don't know, because it is... Right, let, me ref problem. let me ask you the question again. Relax about your pigeonholed responses that you've had with religious people. Just oh, answer this. It's a very simple question I'm asking you. If a creator of everything exists, 
Yeah. Mm. How would you know anything about this creator? How could you know anything about this creator? How I could, I mean, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of confused about what the question is because outside of that, there's, I don't know any possible ways because there it's such an otherworldly concept to begin with. No, there's it's, only one possible way in that paradigm. How? Are you asking a leading question? No, I'm asking a very simple, simple logical question. If there's a creator of everything that exists, that created everything, how could we as creation know anything about this creator? Is there, is there an answer you have in mind for it? There's only one answer. Well, please tell me then. What is the well, what, answer? What would your answer be to that question? Like I said before, I don't know. All right, and I'll repeat my answer that I've already said. If that creator revealed the information to us. Well, okay, but what information would that be? The information, <laughs> the nature of the creator, why he created us, guidance for us, objective morality, supreme guidance, all of these things. Verbally? I'm sorry? So, so these are so what you're asking now, uh, Victor. So hi, Victor. Welcome to the stream. What you're hi. asking because you're asking about mechanisms of revelation, and you're asking about um, from your understanding, you because you can't seem to think outside. You can't seem to think of the existence of a supernatural uh, anything, and therefore you wouldn't have any idea. Of, and in fact, it's actually a very logical. It's almost deductive. It's deductive. If there's a being that isn't part of the universe and is not accessible to us in any scientific way, then how would we know about that being? Uh, obviously, any, that, that requires some form of communication from that being to us. Now, we're not talking about um, how that is or the mechanism that would be, or but that's just a logical entailment of the fact that if you want information, you have to get it from the, the, the individual being spoken about who happens to be supernatural. But um, I just want to take you back to something you said right at the beginning, because a very interesting thing you said about morality. And you said, why didn't God just program us to know the different, you know, what's right and wrong? Yes. Yeah, uh, well, that and know that he exists. Yeah. OK, so do you, how how does do you what what is morality? Well, it's it's. It's a, uh, oh, sorry, I'm paraphrasing. You know what the read, read up about it, but like it's like a, so, socio. I'm stumbling at words. Forgive me, I'm Swedish. No, no problem. Um, Take your time, my brother. Uh, like, it, it's a, it's a, it's a form of uh, sociological structure we've developed as a society so that we can function better as a society. And so uh, how other does, animals so, practice so, similar sure. thing. Sorry. So you're sort of it's sort of um missing my point a little bit. So if you want to, if you were to make a moral judgment, how would you do that? Now let me make it even better for you, uh, Victor. Can a road bump be a make a moral judgment? Road bump? Yeah, if you have a robot, you've designed the robot, can it make a moral judgment? Oh robot, sorry. Um <laughs> Well, I mean, you, 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 need, you, you need to be sapient, first of all, in order to do that. And then so so clarify to... that term sapient for the people that are listening. Sapient is when you, uh, you are intelligent enough to make your own decisions outside of your uh, natural instincts. Yeah, so you've got to be able to choose between right and wrong, right? Well, yeah. And yeah. So robots can't do that. We agree. Not robots we have today, no. Yeah, so ro we agree. Robots can't do that. So I'm not talking about a wishful world in the future. I'm just talking about the reality as we know it. So yeah. robots can't make moral decisions. So if a robot, so for example, if a robot was, uh, you've seen I Robot the movie, yeah? Re uh, regretfully, yeah. <laughs> okay. So have I. Um, so there's a there's a scene in that where um, uh, what's his name? I, I, uh, Will the, Smith. Will Smith. He's in the he's in the house, and that the the machine that destroys the house just becomes active and starts to knock the house down, almost kills him. 
Now, if it killed him or not, uh, would that would have been, would that have been a uh, punishable? Would we have considered that morally culpable? That machine morally cul morally culpable? Well, well, you said before to not talk about fictitious universes uh, or futures, but if we bring that up, then that'll be a whole other situation because. No, it's not. I'm, I'm talking about the robot example about robots that we know of today. Well, but the robots in iRobot are sapient. They're not sapient. They're not sapient. Oh, no, no, the, the one robot. <laughs> so, the, the yes, one, so the absolutely. Nature. So the robot that I'm talking about is not a sapient robot, yes? Right, right. right. Okay, well, so the question then applies. Well, can we hold that robot that isn't sapient a morally culpable for that decision, for that action of, of almost killing uh, uh, Will Smith? Well, I I assume that we would have to determine that as something else that is in danger of killing or uh, have killed someone that is. I don't know. Sorry, now I'm slurring words. I, That's okay. I'll I'll just repeat the question so it gives you time to collect yourself. Would the robot be morally culpable for killing Will Smith if it killed him? I don't know. I, I think I'm, you do I'm know, not, my brother. I think you I'm do not, know, Victor. Not, sorry? I think you do know. I do? It's, it's straightforward. Robots do not... They act by programming. They do not have the ability to make choices, and therefore they're not morally culpable. Well, fair enough, even though... Yeah, that I mean, this is a basic logic. Do you disagree with that? Tell me why you disagree. I disagree with the example since they go against the programming in that movie and also kind of rapes the source material by proxy. So if if you go against your programming, is that possible? Can you go against your programming? Not a robot. Yeah, not a robot. So if we were human beings were programmed what to, you know... Um, you know, I know the difference between right and wrong, and know that God exists, and know, um, you know, what choices we have to make. Then we would the, the moral accountability would be taken away. So you would not be if I'm a robot that, uh, and actually this is what um, a materialist atheist universe would make me into, because I am everything is reducible down to material. I'm essentially a robot that happens to think that it's free. I would, I, I would, there is no moral culpability for me, whatever my actions, they were inevitable. And well, because yeah. this is how I have evolved my programming through evolution or social structures has led me to. So yes. this is the problem that you'll find yourself in. So if you want God to program everyone with all of the right things, then you take away morality. And that's the problem that we have. So morality yes. requires the ability to choose between right and wrong, the free will to do so. And if there is free will, then some will choose to disobey and some will choose to obey. And therefore, you will have good things in the world and bad things in the world, which is sort of addressing Brother Ali's, one of Brother Ali's issues. Does that make sense, Victor? Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. First of all, atheism is a disposition. It's just a lack of belief and nothing no, else. No, it's not, my friend. It's not. Uh, objectively, agnostic atheism definitely is. Yeah, agnosticism is so. Agnostic atheism is a you know you're you're putting two terms together. So uh, if okay. you're an atheist, well, if, well, if you're I an agnostic, I, I, if you're I an agnostic, uh, because gnosticism or agnosticism is a is a claim or lack of a claim. Theism and atheism is a belief or or lack of belief. So you are a combination of those things. Either you're Agnostic atheist, Gnostic atheist, Agnostic theist, or Gnostic theist. That's how it works. Yeah, so I, I understand this sort of uh, term, convoluted terminology that's applying, but it, an agnostic is someone who doesn't know. Yeah. And a theist is someone who makes the claim that God exists. And an atheist who is the opposite of that, and is, a, is an atheist, like a... Antitheist. Is it an antitheist, absolutely. You would be someone who holds the opposite position. Atheism is it is not a claim. So a lack of belief would be agnostic, but th these are just terms that we're throwing around. So, so you say that you're not sure you lack a belief. Is that what you're saying? I lack, I lack a belief, but that doesn't mean I have a claim of the opposite. 
no absolutely so that would be atheist so you're you're an agnostic in the sense that you you're not sure and you lack a belief is that right well well yeah but i mean yeah like <laughs> Uh, either way, I was going to bring up before that. Oh, uh, what were you saying? Like, well, we were talking about the morality is, thing before you bring something additional. Is that is that on the same topic? I, I was going to respond to you about the evolution thing. We were talking the okay. I'll let you finish because I don't understand where you're going with it. Okay, well, you were saying that oh, evolution dictates that uh, this and that, but. Evolution doesn't really dictate anything. I mean, everything we do and are is part of evolution. Even believing in things is part of our evolution. We have evolved to to, to have these uh, thought pro processes and these types of societies with morals. It has nothing to do with that we should all be like robots. No, but my friend, uh, that's exactly the point that I made, that we are the product of an evolutionary process. Yeah, this is what you believe as an atheist, right? There are many theists that that quote unquote believe it. Evolution is no, but I'm asking right. about you, Victor. I'm not asking about every atheist. Every theist. Do what do you believe, my friend? Me? Yeah. Do you believe that we are a product of an evolutionary process? Well, I said I believe. <laughs> It's like saying, "I yes, I believe in gravity. Yes, I believe that Earth is round." Why do you believe the Earth is round? Yeah, this is this. Yeah, but, please, yes. I'll, I'll let you carry on. Have you heard of this thing called a horizon? <laughs> okay. Why does that make the Earth round? How else would that be possible? Also, we have been in space. If in case you missed that, and why do you, also... you believe you've been in space? Are you serious? Yeah. Do you believe I landed on the moon? Okay. For, I didn't know that you guys were mentally saying goodbye. <laughs> so this was a. Uh, so really, the thing you see. We're not yeah. saying man didn't land on the moon or man hasn't been in space or the earth isn't round. We're asking why you believe it. There's reasons for it. And why you disbelieve in a creator or believe in a creator, there's reasons for it. Um, that's the principle. But unfortunately, yeah, so this is the thing. So one, really, I just want to emphasize the, the questioning line of questioning how brothers you were giving because th this idea, because now, now the claim was, now the statement was, I don't, I don't do beliefs is what he was saying. So then, <laughs> then the question follows, okay, which of the evolutionary experiments have you done to determine for yourself that evolutionary is true? Which of the, you know, like Brother Hamza is talking about the, the roundness of the earth, which of the calculations have you carried out? Have you traveled outside the atmosphere to check if they are? Th how have you verified this? Now, all of this information only comes to us either from books or from other types of testimony. And that's the foundation of actually most of the knowledge we have. How do you know your mother is your mother? Do you believe that I have a brain? Do you believe that you have? These are these are test either testimonial or they're inferences that we make without direct evidence. And this is the problem. And I'm, it's a shame that Brother uh, Victor left. And I understand why he did, because the question we were questioning his foundational positions, and they were not strong, unfortunately. Brother Ali, are you still uh, there? Yeah, I'm, um, I mean, I'm, I was listening to you. Uh, yeah, you I'm, guys, sorry that your friend, up, uh, I'm sorry that your fellow atheist left. You, <laughs> it's uh, not my, yeah, you guys like to color people. I'm, I'm just, I have doubts. That's, that's the thing. Uh, Brother Ali, you know, the, 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 thing, the important thing here is this. <clears throat> when a person has doubts, there are certain ways of resolving those issues. <clears throat> and simply looking at people like Christopher Hitchens or people like that. No, I don't, or, he's, he's, he's an ugly person. He's horrible. I don't. He I understand. Most of he's Islamophobe. I understand that. I understand that. What, 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 this is just an example. It doesn't necessarily mean Christopher Hitchens. I'm just saying to simply listen to people who also, uh, uh, you know, impose doubts upon uh, your belief is perhaps not the right way forward. And the right way forward would be a more objective way of analyzing uh, those doubts and finding, uh, you know, answers and explanations 
uh, upon upon those uh, those things that you doubt. So, for example, I asked you the question, and Hamz asked you the question. Um, how, you know how to to Victor? You know how would the creator, if the creator existed, how would you know about him? How would you find out about him? <coughs> so, if you if you have this doubt, for example, the only rational possibility would be, well. If this creator is supernatural outside the realms of time and space, it is clearly outside of our own faculty to even observe or see. Because, for example, this universe, even things coming to us at the speed of light, there comes a point at the edge of the, or not edge of the universe, but at a point of the universe where that light will actually never reach us. So it's so we can't even observe, and we will never actually ever observe the universe in its entirety. Can I ask Sim a simply because there are parts of it that are outside of our visual spectrum, our visual uh, capabilities, because those objects are perhaps moving faster than the speed of light, or they've moved so far away that that light will never actually reach us. Right. So the point here is this, brother Ali. How do we then find out, how do we then evaluate whether this logical reasoning, this logical claim that the creator may, may have contacted us? And, you know, one of the things that uh, Victor raised was that why would you look at something that was most popular? You know? Because that doesn't, that, that seems like that's confirmation bias or whatever, or he mentioned a fallacy. But I'm, we're not saying accept it because of its popularity. We're saying investigate it, question it, verify it. Uh, what are the claims being made uh, about it being divine, about it being from God? That's have, you test, have you tested it? Can, can I just bring something from science for my mate? Um, this is my latest book. Can you see it? Signature in the Cell. DNA and the evidence for intelligent design. So this is scientific evidence within no, DNA. About, about intelligent design. Most people who actually advocate for that, it's a theory. They 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 are uh, Christian. And I mean, no, I've, no, seen, no, no, I've, no. Seen, I've seen actually a whole film. They all play with the possibility and they say, oh, we're being, you know. They Ali, talk, Ali, yes. Ali. Sure. Please, are, are you really going to defend this position? Okay, talk to me about the single cell and how it evolved. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an expert, but this well, is don't go there then, because this guy's a scientist, and you like scientists, don't yeah. you? Yeah. And brother Ali, before we move to that subject, can I just ask you: Have you verified the claims of the divinity of the Quran, and have you challenged those claims? Have you investigated those I've, claims? Has it tried? Sorry, I have tried. You, you have? How have you tried? Explain to me how you've tried. Uh, listening to imams uh, reading. Uh, okay, what's the miracle of the Quran that you've investigated and you've listened to and you found uh, uh, unsatisfactory? Actually, the biggest, the biggest uh, uh, this is I know it, the biggest miracle in Islam is the Quran itself. Yes. So, uh, so how, have you, how have you, what have you investigated it's, it's, about the claim? I mean, uh, the Quran is, good, I mean, a beautiful literature, I think. But... Uh, we can't really take it uh, as, um, how would I say it, as a guide for human for all time. Uh, Brother was, Ali, was I'll ask time. you a very specific question. Brother Ali, Brother Ali, sure. please. I don't want to interrupt you because I don't want to come across as being rude. I'd like you to have your say. I'd like you to have your opinion. But I asked you a very specific question. What aspects of the miracles of the Quran have you actually tested and what and what have you found lacking? Which miracle did you test? How did you test it? And what did you find lacking? If you could answer that specific question for me. Actually, I don't I don't remember any, but uh, yeah, in general, I found it beautiful. But uh, I mean, in terms of applying it on our today, I mean today, it's it's. It's quite difficult, I think. Brother Why Ali, not? do you, do you know... Uh, one one second, today. just sorry, just one second. Just last couple of sentences, inshallah, then I'll let oh. the, the brothers come in. Okay. Bro brother Ali, 
So I've asked you a very important fundamental question here. You have a book that claims to be a miracle from the creator. And the book makes claims. Allah's wahi makes many claims. The Quran makes many claims. I asked you whether you tested any of them. And you've just told me that you're not even aware of any of them. I don't remember any. Uh, yeah, but you're not aware of them, brother. I mean, uh, the I've heard Damza one time spoke about the three falsification tests. Uh, you're talking about these? Like, uh, brother, I asked you, brother Ali, I asked you specifically that the miracles of the Quran, which miracle did you test and which did you find lacking? And you just said to me that I'm not even aware of any. No, the Quran itself is a miracle, according but the, but to the, it, But it has specific challenges. And I asked you one challenge and the fact that you verified that challenge. Uh, now, Brother Ali, I will, look, I, will, I will say to you as a brother, right? Sure. Bro. My brother, just think about what you just said now. And then, and then think about what you should now do in order to take away those doubts. I shouldn't have to even explain that to you, brother. If you're a man of thinking, of contemplation, sure. the very statement that you just made should be enough for yourself to think about what you have to now do to verify these things can, and can to you, take away those doubts. To, to, to understand better, can you give me an example? You said miracles in the Quran. The Quran claims many miracles. I, I would you... actually love to discuss those with you in detail. But I'll give you I'll give you one miracle of the Quran, okay. just one out of so many. There are so many, you know, I wouldn't be able to list all of them, sure. but just one of them. Allah says in the Quran, had this book come from anyone other than your Lord, you would have found many contradictions, many problems, co contradictions in this book, basically. And this is a very fair statement, brother Ali, but you have to be because, Arabic because if you have a book, that no, six, if you English, have a book that's 600 pages plus in, in length. OK, which is which is basically memorized, narrated over 14 centuries, which touches on many aspects, aspects of morality, aspects of nature, uh, aspects of history. You would expect it to make many mistakes and contradict itself on many occasions. This is but logical. So this is just one claim out of many claims, brother. Yeah, now, but... what I would say to you, brother Ali, is this. What, and, and I would say this to all of my brothers and sisters out there. That, look, we all have doubts. When I was 15 or 16 years old, brother Ali, I had doubts as well. We all have doubts. My parents have given me this religion. How do I know it's true? Islam actually seems like it's not an easy religion because you have to fast in the month of Ramadan. You have to pray five times a day. You have to wake up for Fajr in the morning. Sometimes that's three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, right? Depending on what time of year it is. Now, what I did, Brother Ali, with those doubts is I decided that the, for me to deny this religion and to have my liberal Western lifestyle, I would first have to look at this and scrutinize its claims and the evidences that it provides. And the miracles of the Quran. What is this miracle? What are these miracles? What what how do they define this as a miracle? And during those years of, of, of investigation, and I'm not saying that I've sort of deeply studied as some mashallah scholars may have studied, but I studied it to an extent where I was left with no doubt that this book could not have come from anyone other than Allah. But that was done through investigation and scrutinizing and, and analyzing, brother. But what you have done, brother Ali, is you haven't even done that. No, I mean, I want to say, say something. It seems that, you know, Islam undermines your liberty, your freedom. You know, when you say fasting, oh, prayers, and... But, but, but brother Ali, but just with all due to respect, me. brother I'm Ali, with all I'm due sorry, respect. Can I, say, can I say one thing, one thing? Uh, Ali, I'm sorry, Ali. I'm sorry, one thing, one thing. If you're wrong, please. Uh, undermines your freedom and liberty. Uh, what I want to say, <clears throat> it's it's difficult for a Muslim. You know, it's he, he became more easy to be controlled by the government, by a leader, by a sheikh, when you, when you keep him in that bubble, like... 
praying, fasting. Ali, you know what I mean? Ali, he's not going to use his intellect Ali, correctly. If Ali, I can say that. And you can refuse Ali, you're talking absolute crap, mate. You're more likely to be controlled by your leader or your state when you don't have a guidance from your creator. Yeah. And you're subject to man made laws. Yeah. Because you have no freedom, Ali. You think you got freedom, you haven't got no freedom. Yeah. You don't need the things you're allowed to do, that's it. Now, you tell me what you think Islam um, prohibits that you think is you should be able to do. For example, no, what I said uh, makes it makes it easy for a certain imam or a no, it doesn't to, to control you when you no, are it doesn't. That... I'll ah. tell you why it doesn't, Ali. Sure, go ahead. Because I'm a guy you can't tell what to do. Yeah, I accepted Islam twenty years ago. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, and all guidance from our Creator. What do you mean being controlled? What do you mean being limited freedom? What do you mean? Limited thinking uh, as well. What do you mean you limited really, thinking? You can't really think about because you're in that bubble. You you just can't go out. Look, now, what can't I, I, I think? I, now I have what this. Can't I they, think? they call me all kind of stuff. Ali, what I can't I think? What can't I think? What does Islam tell me? I can't think. I don't know. You can't really question God's existence. I can't question God's existence. The Quran tells me. Well, to why, question why, why some sheikh they say you, know, you can't? I'm sorry? Some sheikh they say you can't really question. No, no, no. The Quran they tells you're me thinking to much. contemplate and reflect. They say you're thinking too much. You, you can't. Talking really think nonsense, like Ali. Maybe where, I, I, where are you from? Where, what's your origin? What's your country? Yemen. Yemen. Okay. Are you from a Sunni or Shia background? Mm, I'm Sunni. You're a Sunni background? Oh, Actually, okay. I, was, I was raised in Saudi. Yeah. You was raised in Saudi. Okay. Yeah. In Islam, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm allowed to be a free thinker. Allah expects me to think and contemplate and reflect. He asks us in the Quran, I know. But I mean, they say so there's, certain, me, limits, there's Muslim, certain limits. What look, I can't question. Just look, answer the question, mate. Look, you made a claim. Tell me as a Muslim why I can't question. For, for, for example, Imam Ghazali, when he accused uh, Ibn Sina and Farabi of being disbelievers because of, I don't know, three... Ali, three tell me something it's I can't really, question. There are things, there are things you, if you say, you would be out of the faith. You, why would, What would I be out of the faith for? Because they are a matter of aqidah, of your doctrine as a Muslim, I think. You can't really question questioning those. it. Like, uh, I don't know, uh, the bath, uh, a resurrection. What? Can we question that? Can we question resurrection? Uh, question bath. what resurrection? And uh, we, res we were we were will be resurrected after after we, we died. Right. Yes. Yeah, so let's how, question how it. This, okay. This let's is, question. Let's question. This this is, is, let's question it. This is a Vincina. He, one yes. second. Sure. Can we can, can, listen? Stop quoting people. It's me and you. All right. Am I allowed to question whether we'll be resurrected? Yeah, we'll be resurrected. Yeah, the Quran says I'll be resurrected. Okay, now what? But how I would be resurrected? That's the thing. How, what does that matter? With our, with our... Brother Hamza, brother Hamza, can I just very quickly? Yeah, go on. Uh, and I'd like to get Dr. It's annoying me now. Ali. It's annoying me. Brother Ali, brother Ali, you, you, you raise a point about resurrection, yes? Yes? Yes, yes. Right. I'm muting myself. Now, so can... if... As I've mentioned to you, that you verify the claims of the Quran with your own rationale and your logic, because you seem like an intelligent person. You seem to have read, you seem to have found out many different, uh, you know, things about what you've explored and what have you. Yet you haven't explored the very book that you're denying, which is the Quran. So what I would say to you, brother Ali, is this. Um, and you said, you know, science has the answers to things, yes? It doesn't have the answer, but it's the only... No, 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 I'm, I'm giving you, I'm giving you a, just an example. Just, sure. just bear with me. Sure. So if science says to you, when we mix, you know, hydrogen and oxygen together, we get water. Two uh, hydrogens, one oxygen, we get water, yes? Yes. Do you believe that to be true? It's been proven, sir, yeah. You believe it to be true. Did you have you done this experiment yourself? Uh, actually, in, uh, in school. 
uh, high school. So, we, so you mixed hydrogen and oxygen together. Well, and you the, got teacher, the, te the teacher did it. I okay, remember. but you didn't do it yourself, right? But I watched it, so I'm not right. even this, So you believe it to be true because you have verified the source is trustable. And as a consequence, you accept that reality that hydrogen mixed with oxygen will produce water, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay, so when you, tr when you verify the source of the Qur'an, and when the creator of the heavens and the earth is telling you that you will be resurrected, and Allah says, right down to the tips of your fingers. Yes? So you once you verify the source, that this is indeed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and now that, that God, that Allah is telling me that I will be resurrected, just as you believe with the surety that hydrogen and oxygen mixed together produce water, I would say you should have 10,000 times, 100,000 times, a million times more trust in the Quran, once you have verified it, that you will be resurrected. It's the best way to verify the Quran. Reading it, reading it. But no, I mean, we there, have are, there are lots we have of things that you can verify, brother. But the point here is this, this stream would go on for many hours. What I would like to do with you, inshallah, if you don't mind, is you email us and I will actually send you a lot of information uh, that is logical, rational, and much of it is testable. Okay, If you want to spend this uh, time and, and effort, and I would hope that you would, sure, because the thing here is this, brother, the value of your eternal life is infinitely more valuable than anything else that you might believe in what you might do in this lifetime. So what I would suggest to you, my brother, humbly, is that give it the relevance, the time and the importance that it requires because your eternal life depends upon it. Now, don't look at what some imam said to you or what some uh, person said here or what you saw some bad people doing here. Th that is not the way that you judge whether this Quran is from Allah or not. So what I'm going to do, inshallah, if you email us, I will send you uh, a, a lot of material that you can read through and analyze and think about yourself. And if, and I emphasize the point, if you come to the conclusion, as Alhamdulillah, I did and so many other people have done so, that this book, the Quran, this, this revelation could not have come from anyone other than Allah, then now you have verified the, the source, then the source is trustable. Now if it says to you that Allah created the jinn and the ins, for no other reason but to worship Allah, then this must be true. If okay. Allah says, if Allah says that in gambling and alcohol, in gambling and intoxicants, if Allah says that the harm, the sin is is worse than the the the, the, the benefit, and this is why Allah has made it forbidden for you, Alhamdulillah, I accept it. I don't need to rationalize that because now I've rationalized the source, and the source is for me. I've been convinced that it's from Allah. So if Allah says that you will be resurrected and you will stand in front of me and you will be questioned for what you have done and your records will be opened, the good and the bad that you have done, then Alhamdulillah, I have no doubt in that because I know that the source is trustable. Are you prepared to, are you prepared to take this journey, brother? Sure, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I mean, uh, we all want to know the truth. We all claim that we're objective. So, and inshallah, I am, you I am, I am, so you, our sincere. email is on the screen. If you email us, inshallah, ta'ala, we will be more sure. than happy to, sure, to provide you with that information. Maybe, Dr. Imran, sorry, do you want to come in there? Talk? Maybe my time's up, but can I ask you, brother, I'm sorry, what was your name? Uh, Abba, my name is Abbas. 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 Uh, can we ask why? 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 Why does he want us to worship him? But brother, you know what? Can I just say one thing very humbly to you? Um, to be honest, it's that is it, that's actually irrelevant at the moment for you. And I'll tell you why it's irrelevant. Because logically, once I verify that the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah tells me that worship is something that is beneficial to me, both in this world and in the hereafter, I say, alhamdulillah, it must be true. So now, now I can investigate what 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 are the benefits just for my 
uh, purposes of, let's say, understanding or knowledge or increasing, inshallah, hopefully in Iman, okay, I can then undertake that journey. But I don't, I don't try to understand that in a vacuum. I understand that with the with the foundational concept that this is from Allah and Allah is telling me it's for my own benefit. Now, when I do investigate it, I actually find out that even when we look at social sciences and the study of psychology, for example, people who believe in a creator actually have less suicide, less mental illness, less stress. They, they have less hopelessness, feelings of hopelessness. They are more grateful. They have more gratitude, even in conditions that they may find themselves in great difficulty. Yet, if they are religious and they worship Allah, they worship a creator, they tend to bear difficulties and burdens far better than those who don't believe in a creator. Okay? I agree with you. I agree. So well, there are many well, uh, benefits. Now, 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 the thing well, uh, here is this, brother. The thing here is this, brother. Even if I couldn't see those benefits, the very fact that Allah has told me it's beneficial and I've verified the source that it is indeed from Allah is enough for me. But I do the investigation after. I do the initial investigation, which is this information. Is it from Allah or is it just from some man in the desert in the 7th century, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was herding goats? And when I, when I do that investigation, I'm overwhelmingly convinced that this is from Allah and whatever is in it is the truth. Whether my heart accepts it or does not accept it, that is a deficiency within, within my knowledge or my understanding. And the reason why I am confident about that is because I've verified that this is from Allah. And therefore, if my opinion goes against that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then 100% I'm wrong. Allah has to be right. That's the reality, brother. But we have to do it logically. What you're talking about, you're talking about suffering. You're talking about why does this happen in the world? You're talking about why do some people of religion do this and do that? No. Verify, first of all, does Allah exist? We've given you rational reasons why Allah exists. Then has this creator communicated with me? What's the evidence that this is from the creator once you verify that whatever it says just as you verified h2o is water you verify the quran whatever the quran says you accept it now you increase yourself in knowledge after that okay allah says this allah says that can i can i can i find out some benefits because i would like to learn more i'd like to strengthen my iman strengthen my belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is humble and this is the right approach brother yeah. Well, before, before I leave, can, bro, can Brother Omran, uh, he said he's going to explain the problem of evil? No, we're not going to do that now. We're not going to do that. Well, let Brother Imran, if he wants to, quickly just come in there. Was, no, was no, it, no. Let so, me just answer the worship question, if you don't uh, mind. Only. Just quickly, yeah. this is a quick one, it's, and this is a monologue, so you don't need to respond. Okay, well, kind of you do. <laughs> All right, so when we worship Allah, what does that mean? It means we recognize Allah and we follow his guidance. Now, who? what does that mean by, by following what he doing what he says for us to do and refraining from what he says not to do. Who benefits from that? We do. There you go. So by worshipping Allah, we benefit ourselves. What's the benefit? Well, you avoid all the things in this world that can cause harm to you and you go towards the things that are of benefit to you. Obviously, it's a stupid question. Anyway, uh, Imran, would you like you want to go into that evil flex or what? Um, I think that, I think we've thrown a lot at you. Um, mm. the, the things that I would say, brother, is... Um, you asked a very interesting question about can we ask, can we doubt? And then you asked about very basic things within Islam, like the existence of God. Can we doubt the resurrection? Which is sort of almost like saying, can I have a building that floats in the air without a foundation? You know, and this is the sort of type of questioning that it doesn't really make sense to do this. And I want to ask you a question. Can you, can you doubt the foundations of science? Uh, no, science has, has been proven as uh, as as a, as the as method no, that's, to, that's to not the find I'm out. You, my brother, the question I'm asking you is: Can you doubt the foundations of science? What's the foundation of science? Why do you believe in something without knowing its foundations? 
No, because it's been proven that it's the only method that can help us to know something, to know about. Can you? About, can you? About can you doubt, so this is what I'm asking you. Can you doubt the foundations of science? No, we can't. Okay, blind. But you don't know what the foundations are, right? Mm, I haven't really searched that, but. Okay, so you believe in these without verifying them, and you have blind faith in them, taqlid in them, yes. No, it's not blind faith because I yes, saw because the evidence. I saw the evidence. The evidence that my brother, can, my, can... This is why I'm asking you the question. Sure. I asked you if you can doubt the foundations, and you said, "What are the foundations?" That's the question I was like that we came to. You don't know the foundations, and then you said that. Uh, no, sorry, no. I asked you, what, "Can you doubt the foundations?" You said the foundations have been proven, and I said, "What are the foundations?" You didn't know, and then I asked you again, "Can you doubt the foundations?" You said, "No." And what you so then what I said is that you've taken the foundation, the science with its foundations that you don't know about, in blind faith. Actually, religion. If you believe in religion, you you need blind faith as well. Not at all. But, but, not at all. But, not but, at all. But, because no, but, know, no, no, no. Let's look one second, brother Ali. Brother Ali, don't don't throw us a little comment in like that and try to move on the conversation. Because I because you believe that you're the one that the science science is the only way to know truth, right? No, it has proven itself as the only method no, we have. So how has it? How has it done? How has it done this, please? Uh, you know, to take for example, uh, how how science helped human in our age. No, 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 no. Um, you're talking about the application. I'm yeah. talking about the object itself. So science itself as a methodology. Can you doubt its foundations? We can question them. I okay. Think. Have you questioned them? I haven't. Well, why not? Brother, you're questioning no, whether no, Allah exists, no, you're questioning no, no. whether the resurrection exists, no, and then no, you're no. saying that I only believe in the, what can be proven through science, and you haven't questioned anything about science. For me, it shows a double standard in your approach, my brother. Yeah, it's actually, and it I think if you have, a, I, I've never thought if of you it. have a double standard in your approach, then that's a problem because what you're going to do is you're going to end up in a uh, strange position. And I'll give you one example, I'll give you one example. The science itself is built on, is, it assumes certain things to be uh, true without evidence for it to work. Now, I'm not even going to tell you what those things are, because I think the conversation with you has been uh, quite interesting and quite long. And I think we'll, we'll cut, 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 cut a bit here. Feel free, we'll, we're gonna, when you email us on the email below, we can have further discussions. And feel free to come again to talk specifically about the problem of evil. We can talk about that. Sure. But what I'm, what I'm saying to you is that you need to have... Uh, you need to apply your standards equally to whatever you are uh, thinking about, whether that's religion or whether that's science, wh whatever that might be. Otherwise, what you're going to do is you're going to fall under the blind faith of the Western science, which is what most people are follow following nowadays, because you become overly impressed by uh, things that Westerners say, because we still have the overhang of when the Westerners were ruling over our countries, and we think that somehow because they have material progress in their societies. I mean, sociologically, they're destructive. Their societies are falling to pieces. I mean, you don't even know if you're a man or a woman now in societies. Mm -hmm. But sociologically, but uh, uh, yeah, materially, they have everything at all, you know, in their societies. But the question is, what actually is progress? Now, these are all big questions. We won't go into them now. It's been nice having you on, the brother. Yeah, we, we, we had an interesting conversation. Please nice do contact us so we can cover. Uh, sure, uh, I, I will. I will. It's efdawa.gmail.com, right? At gmail.com. Yes. That's correct. Yeah, I got you. Thank you, guys. No, I'm best. sorry if I... No, no, that's quite no, all right. right. One last thing I just want to say to you before you yeah. go is that do not treat this incident or this event that we've now spoken to you as just something that happened by chance. This is your opportunity. You're at a crossroads now. And this is your opportunity to either say, ah, you know what, let me just get on with life. Or you have an opportunity to say, you know what, I owe it to myself and I owe it to my children. And I owe it to the generations that will come after me as to the consequences of my decision. And those decisions that you're going to make, the decision you're going to make is is li literally that it will not just be a decision that will affect you but your children and the generations that will come after you so i hope then inshallah that you take it with that seriousness do contact us and inshallah we will engage if the conversation at times has been 
perhaps a little bit harsh. I apologize, but you know, these discussions sometimes can be a little yeah, bit like I, that. I can take a bunch, don't worry. Uh, but you know, let, let's inshallah move on constructively, but deal with the matter with the seriousness that it deserves. And brother, remember one thing, and I've mentioned this many times before. Allah says on the day of judgment, if they were to give the whole world as a ransom on that day, it will not be accepted from them. Now, if that statement is true, if that statement is true, you would have to appreciate that that would be incredibly huge, incredibly huge grave for that individual, right? Now, it's important, brother, that for your own sake and the sake of your children and the generations to come, that you verify, because that's a very, very big claim now. You verify whether there is a truth to this reality of this statement. Okay, so inshallah, treat it with importance, contact us, and we'll be happy to inshallah engage with you. Thanks, guys. You have, uh, have a wonderful night. Oh, what Thanks. All right. Take care. Thank you. All the best. I just wanted to make the point that to the people listening because we had a few comments about calling uh, brother Ali brother. So he, if he, if he's not our brother in faith, he's a brother in humanity. So it's, an, it's a respectful term, and he comes from a background where he understands the respect of this. So may Allah guide him, inshallah. I uh, mean, I mean, uh, and um, uh, have we got any of the other? Because we've got a few guests waiting. Has anybody very? Morris Kasama had his camera on before. Morris, uh, okay. Uh, hi, Morris. Welcome to the stream. Maurice, you muted, mate. Hi. Hi, Maurice. Hello. How are you? All right. I'm fine. Assalamu alaikum. Well, alaikum. You're, 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 you're busy at work at the moment. Yeah, I'm gonna be very quick. Yeah, um, I'm actually from Liberia, uh, West Africa, uh, but I'm based in Pennsylvania, United States. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I just want to thank you guys so much. Uh, I have learned so much from you guys. Uh, I always follow you guys on the show. Anytime I do have the chance. Uh, I want to uh, extend special thanks to uh, Hamza. I always use his five poison uh, uh, stuff. But I just want to say this. I don't know whether this is I mean, related to the topic that you guys discussing. I had a discussion, I think, a week ago with uh, some Christians, and we were talking about the, the concept of God. Then I told them, I said, look, the concept of God in Islam has no second thought. It's absolute. Because we say God is one. He has no, no beginning and no ending. Uh, he's all-knowing. He's all-merciful. So with these things, there's no argument. But in a Christian concept, as much as we don't believe in the in Trinity concept of uh, God, but for argument's sake, the fact that the Christian concept, the Trinity concept, the son die, or one person die, or the human side die, not the God side, it only shows that, it only shows that logically there cannot be three gods, there cannot be two gods into one. Because why the three, why the three of them couldn't die together? Why the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit couldn't die. Why the sun has to die? Why the sun has to come on earth? Why they couldn't all come together? So I'm trying to say this. I don't know whether it makes sense. I mean, it just popped up in my head. But I mean, I was just trying to say that. Even with the concept of the Trinity, as much as we don't believe in that Trinity, in that concept, but just for argument's sake, just by that, it only shows that they cannot be three God because why? they have to do everything. If they are equal, they have to do everything together. They have to do everything together. The fact that one person could come on earth and die, whether the human divine side, the human side, it doesn't matter. Uh, the brother father, Morris, all of them, yes. Uh, bro brother Morris, uh, Mashallah, you made a good point. We we do have a, a, a stream that specifically answers these type of questions, brother. It's called the Dawa Clinic. And we do do that every alternate uh, Thursday. So I think next week, is it next week is Dawa Clinic, right? Is that right? Yeah. So, so next week, inshallah, on Thursday is the Dawah Clinic. If you come on that stream, we'll get you on first, inshallah. If you're in the back chat, in the back room, we'll get you on the first uh, to come onto the stream. Uh, today's inshallah. stream actually is for non-Muslims, and we sort of just, uh, we're questioning this. But we're very, uh, very grateful for you to come on and take the time for coming on, brother. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. So where are you? Costco or IKEA? Say that again. Where are you? Costco or IKEA? I'm in Costco. Costco. I'm in Pennsylvania. Where? All right, Pennsylvania. Oh, oh, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay, I should have said Walmart as well. All right, Salik, oh, bro. Thank, nice thank to you meet so you. Salik, Salik. Do we have any other one uh, brothers or uh, sisters in the back chat that we've uh, seen? Uh, has no. anybody put their cameras on? No. No. Okay, so if you put your oh here oh, we go. Anas got... just put his camera oh. on. He's been okay. dying to ask a question. Uh, brother Anas, uh, are you Muslim? Assalamu alaikum. Yes, I am Muslim. Yes, brother. Uh, this is actually for a non-Muslim stream, but but go, go on. You've, you're on now, so I'm, but I, I'm gonna... I have one only question. Yeah. Uh, do you guys do a dawah only in uh, UK? So, brother, what it is? Uh, generally, we 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 are based in the UK, but the, the the one of the benefits of YouTube is that obviously it's very international. So. We've recently uh, uh, translated a lot of uh, videos. Um, we had been doing it from the beginning, uh, very close to the beginning, which was Arabic. Mm -hmm. But we do have a Balkans channel, and we've just translated a whole lot of videos in Spanish and Portuguese. So we are trying to sort of uh, branch out to different languages. But f physically, we are, we're, we're based in the UK, yes. Yes, that's, that was my only question. Okay, but we do our worldwide through our online platform. Mm. Where are you? Where are you based, brother Anas? In Sweden. Ah, oh, mashallah. mashallah. Okay, mashallah. Very good. Uh, so what you can do, brother, is uh, encourage the Swedish people because many of them do speak English. Yes, yes. Uh, encourage them to maybe to, uh, you know subscribe to the channel or watch the arguments or or by all means they can come onto the uh, come onto the streams and we can have a discussion with them. Yes, yes. Nice to meet you, brother. Asalaamu Alaikum. You too. Um, so, if, uh, so we've got... Uh, 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 brothers, if, you, if you're non-Muslim, we would please like you to come on first. Uh, so if there's any non-Muslims, can you put your camera on, please? Oh, his beard just gave him away. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm trying to make any Muslim or not. There is no, because we, I man. think we've got now lots of uh, lots of uh, Muslims on the back. On the back He's hiding right his beard, though. I think bring him on, bring him on. All right, all right. Asalaamu uh, Alaikum, brother. Asha'Allah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. His camera's nearly as good as mine. What's happening, bro? Can you brothers hear me? It's yes, very brother. sketchy. It's a bit, a bit difficult to, because it's breaking up a lot. If you can maybe quickly ask whatever you need to ask, inshallah, then we can hopefully try to address it. Uh, I'm sorry very much. I just called you guys to tell you that I love all of you for the sake of Allah. Oh, that's it. I'm calling from the United States, and I just had the chance. Thank you very much for allowing me. Remember us in your dua, inshallah. Question also at the camera. Okay, uh, question. Yeah, um, so hello guys. I just had a quick question with regards to Surah Al Baqarah. So basically, like, I recently started reading the Quran because I want to be able to, like, because lately, like, I started like three or four months ago just looking into like comparative religion and whatnot. And I find that it's pretty a lot easier to read the Bible because I know it's not true, right? Whereas when I'm reading the Quran, I have to make sure that, like, I can kind of reconcile everything. So I just had a question about one of the verses in uh, chapter 2, verse 17. I can read it out and then just read the translation from Quran.com, if that's okay. Chapter 2, 17. Yeah, yeah. I'll read it. One second. Okay. Um, just been there. Um, their example is that for someone who kindles a fire, but when it's like up all around them, Allah takes away their light, leaving them in complete darkness, unable to see. They're willfully deaf, dumb and blind, so they'll never return to the right path. Okay, what's your point? So basically, like, I started reading it, and I could reconcile the other one, like, where it says Allah seals their hearts. Then I did I read, like, Tafsir bin Kathir, and I read the context of it, and I read, like, the related hadith, and I'm like, oh, okay, like, this makes total sense. It's not necessarily, like, unjust. And I know, like, chapter 2, verse 17 like it's not and it's just my understanding so i'm just trying to understand like 
how we would kind of reconcile it because it says maybe it's like referring to something or it's just an analogy but it says of someone who kindles a fire but when it lights up all around them allah takes with their light like upon initial reading like my interpretation is that they're putting in an effort but allah takes away their light but i'm sure that's not correct so if one of you guys can kind of like comment on it i'd appreciate it uh, to be honest with you we're not really scholars and this is a question you would ask a scholar who understands all the verses in the Quran, all the hadith that regards it, and all the opinions on it. To be honest, I mean, my clear Quran, the, the title for that particular verse is the hypocrite's example. So, it, so it's it's exposing the munafiq, the one who um, yeah. obviously claims to be Muslim but's not. Yeah. But we're not we're not here to do these questions, bro. Yeah. Sorry. Our, yeah. Yeah, but well, maybe the doctor might be. I've come across this before. Yeah, Doctor Imran, do you want to touch on that at all? Doctor Doctor Imran, I think Doctor Doctor Imran, can you hear us? Uh, we can't. We can't hear you. <laughs> it, it's, it's true what someone said in the comment section. Just, just read the verses before it actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you read the verse before, now, guys. Yes, we can. Yeah, can hear you now, brother. Okay, alhamdulillah. So. This, just read the tafsir. This is talking about the hypocrites. Yeah, yeah. And it's talking about hypocrites because basically what they do is um, they deviate from the guidance knowingly. So this is why it goes on to talk about being willfully ignorant. So this is a. So this is why Allah speaks to him about this this way that when they have an illumination, you can, you can benefit from from that, but then when this goes away, they're they're blind again. And essentially, this is. This is they, the way that they interact with the revelation. So they they prefer, the hypocrites prefer the misguidance over the guidance. It's willful. So that they're left in this state of um, almost sort of toing and froing. So it's very clear from the tafsir, actually, because if, I assume you would have looked at that. But this oh, is are you talking, talking about tafsir bin Kathir? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, didn't look, I looked at the tafsir for the other verses, but I didn't get to this one yet. Yeah. But when it's so That would like, be my first port of call for okay. this sort of... Investing. It's good that you're doing this. So mm -hmm. all you would need to do is just to have the tafsir either online with you or there's some lots of apps. And as you're mm -hmm. reading, just check as you go along and it will clarify that. So because it's a willful turning away from the guidance and then pretending, then these, these people are, are deserving of the state they find themselves in. But what does it mean by Allah takes away their light? Because it says like they light the torch. So like, No, because Allah says it's that it's an ex or? as an example as an example you see so i think the one thing brother is very important is that if you really wish to uh, understand the quran you need to join some sort of study group yeah uh, with a scholar mm -hmm. who has the ability to do the tafsir because as you know and you've probably studied I, I, i'm presuming in the english language mm -hmm. context is very important right yeah yeah context actually changes the meaning completely right mm -hmm. and you or i with our basic understanding of the quran and perhaps uh, not understanding classical arabic yes and not understanding necessarily the context could come up with a very different interpretation yes right yeah and we and we know that in the quran allah says very clearly that there are explicit statements and then those that are ambiguous yes Mm -hmm. And so we we would we would understand the Quran much better if we treat it with the same reverence that we treat other subjects, whether it's physics or mathematics or uh, you know whether it's uh, you know biology, whatever it might be. We don't just pick up a book and start reading it and trying to understand it. Mm -hmm. we, we always go to people of a of a of an authority who have the relevant training that's necessary in order for them to be able to explain it with the context with the meaning with the grammar with everything else yes now that doesn't mean to say that we shouldn't read the quran that we shouldn't try to understand it but wherever we do have like imran just said where you have difficulty in something uh, rather than assume something that you know negative about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh, allah somehow removes the guidance removes the light from them and leaves them in, in, into darkness in reality, you know, we can come up with a very wrong interpretation of things. So it's very mm -hmm. important. Inshallah, I would definitely uh, recommend. Yeah, so just to, to reemphasize that point. 
These yeah. aren't people who are trying sincerely to yes. have, be guided by Allah. Do you understand? These are hypocrites. These right. are people who are pretending, uh, yeah. knowingly mis being, knowingly misguiding others and pretending to be yeah. people upon guidance. So there's right. a willful right. ignorance, and therefore these are people like who who may. The there's a couple of examples. The next example is about lightning and thunder and the light being taken away. So this is like people who who uh, they pretend to, to do something so they kindle a fire, but they don't get the light from it. Right, yeah. And these are people who are like, they're, they're in the Salah maybe praying, but they're not going to get any other benefit from it. So, it. so when you read into it, you'll, you'll see much more. But I agree with Brother Ham, uh, Abbas absolutely that uh, it's probably worth uh, having a going to a regular circle where they... They do the tafsir of these things, and uh, and it will, might be useful as well. And it, it basically allows you to ask these questions, and uh, you'll gain benefit from sitting with with scholars as we all would, inshallah. For sure, inshallah. Yeah, I can definitely like respect like just to add one more thing, like Brother Abbas's point. Like, I don't know, like about you guys, but like being like Pakistani myself, like for example, like a lot of people like who might not know a language that does this. So, for example, like in Urdu, sometimes we say hum, right? In terms of, instead of ma, and hum is plural. But sometimes it's just a form of respect, right? It, like no Urdu speaker would take that to mean like multiple people, right? Whereas like if you didn't have like, you didn't speak a language where you didn't have that sort of understanding. When you see we, you might totally like misunderstand it. So I definitely like yeah. respect that point. But yeah, sorry if it wasn't the right stream. I would just no, 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 no it's that, absolutely fine. You know, if inshallah on, on Dawa Clinic or one of the other streams you come on, we can maybe elaborate more. Or, but mm -hmm. but generally we would we ourselves would actually go to scholars to get tafsir. Uh, right. So what what exactly does this mean? Um, you know, and and often I've heard scholars, mashallah, when they give an explanation, they say, well, this root word of Arabic actually means this, and it's and it comes from here, and it actually means this, and when you look at it like this, and, Subhanallah. So for example, I'll give you an example. I've given this example many times, and and the non-Muslims often use this word kafir or kufr. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's translated as disbeliever. But in Arabic, it has multiple meanings. And actually, when you study those multiple meanings, it has so much more depth than just the word disbeliever. Because the Arabic language, especially the classical Arabic of the Quran, subhanAllah, is incredibly multi-layered in its meaning. And it reinforces the message in a, in a most elaborate and beautiful way. So it can mean... The one who conceals, the one who hides the truth, the one who... And there's so many multiple meanings to the word kafir or kufr, right? Mm -hmm. And yet, I, I didn't know that. So when I when I heard the scholar explaining that with the grammar, with the, I thought, wow, subhanAllah, it's just completely... You know, uh, the word sleepy in Arabic, apparently there are dozens of ways of saying sleepy. <laughs> uh, and in English, you just translate it as sleepy. But they have so many different. So it's it's a very rich language. It's a very beautiful language, and and you'll really benefit, brother, from uh, from if you're really interested. You know, definitely you'll benefit from scholarship and sitting with scholarship. Mashallah, there are lots of online courses now as well, where uh, brothers do do tafsir courses online and stuff. Uh, I would definitely uh, you know go to a a qualified scholar who has been qualified from one of the recognized universities that's often recognized by other scholars to be you know scholarly and then inshallah enroll enroll on, on those courses and you'll find it very beneficial inshallah 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 for sure brothers jazakallah khairan i appreciate all that you do and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum uh so we have a couple of people still waiting i don't know if johan your device is not connected so we can't get you on uh you'll have to at least connect your camera uh, Nayef, let's get you on next and then we'll try Johan if he gets his uh, device connected and he shows his face. Uh, Nayef, oh your, wow, you looked all set to go, man. What happened? Your internet connection is very slow, Nayef. Can you guys hear me now? We can, yes. Do, yes. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Much I'm a Muslim. Well, I'm not going to take too much of your time. I'm just going to say that uh, I appreciate whatever you guys have done, it means a lot to us uh, living in uh, in Pakistan and elsewhere. Uh, my question, I'm going to try and make it really short. Uh, it was actually about the kafir thing you were just talking about earlier, Abbas, Brother Abbas. Uh, oh, sorry, Brother, your voice is stopped again. We can't hear you. Uh, so, so 
yeah, maybe if you switch your camera off, maybe it'll be easier. Um, yeah. Yeah, brother, we can't hear you. If you want to perhaps just message in the private chat, we can see if we can read out your question and then try to try to answer it that way. Okay, I think we leave it to the private chat. Uh, uh, brothers, I think we probably round off things now because it is uh, half midnight, gone past midnight. Uh, it's it's, it's 12.36. Uh, Hamza, do you want to just add anything before we go? Um, not really. We did, we did everything. Uh, my stupid camera's messing around, so I'm going to stop that. Uh, no, alhamdulillah. Uh, we, we had um, Ali was good because, uh, like I said to the chat earlier, it's not necessarily him. It's just this kind of way of thinking that we were addressing. You know, atheists think they've got this kind of intellectual, logical, rational, higher ground with science in their pockets. And um, we kind of show that it's not really the case, as the doctor said, uh, with regards to under, understanding the uh, foundations of science. So, and then it turns a bit of a dower clinic, but alhamdulillah. It, yeah. it is where it is <laughs> but we do what we do we try our best um unfortunately i think we're too good at taking apart people's beliefs christians are scared to death of coming on here because they know they're going to get why do you be the bible's reliable source of information um i'm surprised they've not brought the top boys on to be honest but yeah um, alhamdulillah it was um yeah. chill out relax yeah, I mean, one of the things that I take away from this is that, uh, and and I, I don't mean any disrespect to, to Brother Ali, but, and I've met many people and spoken to many people who have major doubts or they've even left Islam. And the one thing that comes across consistently is when I ask them the very basic concepts of the evidences that the Quran says that it has to signify uh, beyond any doubt that this is for, indeed from Allah, they're unaware of those claims. They're unaware of those tests. And, and that's the one thing that I have often taken away uh, from, from people who've, who've left Islam or they doubt Islam. And so what I would say to brothers and sisters who are watching, perhaps who also have doubts, is that, you know, doubts are if untreated, if your doubts are untreated, they're like a cancer. They will eat away uh, your iman from you if you do not uh, deal with those doubts in a logical and a rational way. I'm not saying blind belief or blind following. No, I'm saying that when you have doubts, address the doubts. Ask the people of knowledge. Uh, investigate for yourself. You have no excuse now. You go on the internet. You go on YouTube. You go on, um, uh, you Google things, you will find many uh, uh, areas where uh, many channels, many different scholars, mashallah, uh, far more capable than, than us here, who have answered these doubts. These are not new doubts. These doubts have existed for the last, you know, 1,400 years. People have presented these doubts. And these doubts have been dealt with, subhanAllah, right? So don't live in perpetual doubt. Do something about it. And use your rational faculties. Allah has given you an intellect and knowledge and understanding, not just to go to work and feed your family. You know, even an insect or a bird will go and harvest uh, food or find food and forage and feed its offspring and, 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 and procreate, procreate and, and have children and offspring and what have you. Allah has given you an intellect and an, 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 an understanding and a concept of right and wrong and, 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 and evaluating these things to discover Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to evaluate the evidence that is being provided in front of you. So, you know, engage your faculties uh, and strive to, to, to learn those things and evaluate the, these things more than you would do for worldly gain. Unfortunately, we do the exact opposite. We'll spend 20, 30 years of our lives investing in education and what have you so we can get a job, the job that we want. Why do we want the job that we want? Because either we want people to say how clever we are or we want to see people to, to admire how rich we are or we want to sort of have comfort of nice cars and nice houses and other things that we, we would, we would, we would uh, you know, want. Those may have some value. Yes, I agree. 
but they're not equal to the value of your afterlife and and you're facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment uh, because that value is far exceeding any value so pri it's about priorities why am i here what am i supposed to be doing here where am i going these are important questions and you should address those questions and at least come to a rational conclusion based upon the evaluation of the evidence before you make your decision about leaving Islam or leaving the belief of God or what have you. Because if you make the wrong decision, there are grave consequences, right? Grave consequences. Uh, and these consequences are not just for one year, two years, three years. But as I said, they are generational uh, con consequences. Because your leaving Islam will have an effect on perhaps your partner, your wife, your husband or whatever, will have an effect upon your children and will have an effect on the generations that will come after you. So take it with seriousness, inshallah. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll let uh, the most eloquent of us, <laughs> Dr. Imran, wrap things up, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, brother. I think you've given me a title that you deserve, mashallah. Um, I just wanted to say that anything we said which is right, right and correct is from Allah and anything that's uh, in error is from ourselves. May Allah forgive us. Jazakallah khair, brothers and sisters. As alaykum. Right, just before we go, I just want to plug somebody. Um, you know the sisters Delilah and Rachel? These guys. Um, they took Shahada now, I think, three weeks ago. They've started their own channel uh, to, to cover their journey um, into Islam and through Islam and onwards. So um, it'd be fantastic if you guys could go across to their uh, channel, which is Sisters on a Mission, and subscribe and give them some uh, support, inshallah. You'll see that from this picture that you'll know who they are, inshallah. All right, so if you can, go and do that, inshallah. And with that, inshallah, we will uh, say a big salam to our brothers and sisters. Jazakallah khair for yeah. tuning in and, and uh, you know taking the time. Uh, in the comments, Hamza has already commented, but let's be gracious, inshallah, in our comments. Uh, let's not condemn people. Uh, you know, this the Prophet وسلم, he brought people to Islam with the beauty of Islam, with the beauty of his character. And so let Allah, inshallah, hopefully uh, allow us to at least get a glimpse of that character of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, that we can be compassionate, we can be kind. And that we can, inshallah, invite people with da'wah, with good words, with good behavior, good practices, inshallah. Uh, let's not condemn people. Let's not talk ill of people. Uh, may Allah forgive us when we do. And may Allah, inshallah, inspire us to, to be the best of examples, which is the example of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa Please remember us in your du'a and our families in your du'a, uh, in your prayers, inshallah ta'ala. And um, with that, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.